Thank you for watching the After Files live stream. This is not a professional production. We don't know why anyone watches this thing, but we're glad you do. And now, to kick off the show is everyone's favorite sidekick. The one, the only, Hecklefish. Yeah, that's that's on. Is this is this on? Is this mic on? The producers, they're nodding. I just learned that I could see your faces down there, but you can't see each other's faces, can you? Oh, you can see each other's. Oh, all right, all right. You upset? I think I think we have a new record tonight. What was the What was the final number? What, what's the number? Four, 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 two, four, forty-two thousand. Four to forty-three, four, one, four, four. So unprofessional. This isn't a live stream. This is a circus. All right. So I'm getting a notification that um, I'm on an unstable connection because, of course, I am. So if things get weird, I, I apologize for that. I think the, the last live stream, like all the audio dropped out. That was a whole thing. It's not a professional operation. All right, I've got the chat here. Feliciano's here. Hey, gang. Evan Borden, 42,000. That's the word. Gnu's here. Daniel Rodriguez, appreciate the tip. Hi, Rachel. 43,000. That's a lot. So 43,000 um, fills a stadium. That's weird. If we all got... To, we should all get together and watch it live, like at a drive-in or something, shouldn't we? Should we do a live premiere at a drive-in? There's a drive-in here in Vegas. I just found it the other day. Open. I mean, how much? How much would it cost to rent out a drive-in? Like thirty dollars. I mean, they they really need help. Uh, Coach McGurk is here. There's PC. There's Cargo on. Tommy Barnes is here. Dwayne Fong. Bessie Knox. 
uh, Bessie Knox, big supporter of the channel. Volcanics works. Buzz Darkin is here. Oh, my goodness. I apologize. It's unprofessional. Um, I'm talking to Jen down there. Two things. One, do we turn monetization on? Two, is slow mode on the chat because it's it's bonkers. A little bonkers. All right. Did you guys like this episode? This was, um, well, the first draft was uh, written by the great Mike Barra. Uh, who uh, effectively broke my brain? So I'm I'm sorry, Mike, that I didn't use a lot of that. You, you put you put me on the right track, but it was Mike is just it, he's just too smart for me. Is is really all it is? I don't I can't I don't understand what he's talking about. William Clark likes the shades. Thanks, man. If it's not a fashion thing, this these are like Amazon basics. And it's got a little magnification and the lens because I have lights in my face, so it's otherwise. The, the the like the early live streams is me doing this a lot, which wasn't a great look. Mike D loved it. Great concept, writing and editing. Anything that makes me think is great. Yeah, Allison Love loved it. Mike Russ is the best show so far. That's a huge compliment. Someone in the uh, in the premiere is saying, so does this explain quantum entanglement and um yes it does it does where um right we've got two particles that become entangled and then separated and then they can affect each other it doesn't matter how far apart they are in space and the and the effects are instant so ignoring the speed of light the ether would explain that because the ether doesn't know about the speed of light or time and those the, the the particles are entangled to our perception in just empty space, but the ether is a field. So the ether doesn't think it's empty space. The ether says that we're not really entangled. I'm communicating with the particle through this medium. Uh, Byron Ganger, did, did you take off last week to build this? Um, no, I went into LA to shoot a little bit of um, an episode of the unexplained with Shatner. And before you get too excited, I was there for 45 minutes in an old house with a couple of guys and cameras. I didn't, you know, I didn't hang out with Shat. But um, they didn't make me sign anything about NDA, but I, I probably shouldn't say too much about what I was talking about. But I don't know when it airs. So so that's why I was off last week because I needed to, to drive into to L.A. And I want to make sure that the episode was ready for you guys, because otherwise that, that's all I would think about. I would just stress about it. Uh, Neil, is that a new studio you're in? I, I think we after filed from this space once or twice before, maybe just once. It may it looks like a new studio. I'm just at my desk at, at work. I moved um, the, the set because I was in there gesturing to the to the other room. I was in there and I was just sitting on a stool, you know, on a crappy computer. And it was just, it became fatiguing with my old body. And because I'm, I was high up, I, I would keep creeping down. So my body would creep down, but my boxers would stay put. So after a, a couple of hours, it became uncomfortable. So, so that's where we are today. Bristo Sports is here, enjoys the channel. I appreciate that. In, in prodigal does all time and space exist uh, it, you it looked like a good comment and but it went it went too fast does all time and space exist in the same place in the ether and thus there is no separation or distance there in prodigal that's a great question space exists so like distances exist from here to the moon or here to the center of the galaxy or whatever those exist but time doesn't so um, Kazarev felt that time was a, a, a physical field, a physical energy field that you could, you could touch. And because it was physical, it could be manipulated, it could be bent, it could be reversed. And his theories explain a lot of, a lot of things that we've discovered since his mysterious and untimely death, um, including the time reflection experiment that was just a couple of weeks ago at uh, CUNY New York. You know, that, I didn't want to get into too much about the... Uh, 
about the time reflection experiment because it's it's pretty heavy and it's it wasn't it's not exactly time travel. Um, but Kozarev's theories would explain how it's possible. Someone asking, are we going to get into the alien whistleblower? We are going to talk about that a little bit, Carlos. Randwar, have you built your mirror yet? I haven't built it, but I would. I would build one. Uh, my wife, Jen, could probably build that if we gave her the plans. So uh, you can... But there are plans online. I didn't link to anything because it's mostly Russian companies, and I don't know how I don't know how ske how sketchy they are. Um, but if you want to pursue it, you, you go ahead and pursue it. But you can buy you could buy an entire kit on the internet, the aluminum, uh, the wood that you need, and the plans, and you put it together like an IKEA uh, project, and then travel through time. I guess. So I would definitely try it. Um, but if you read the book. Which, if you enjoyed tonight's episode, then check out the book. It's, a, it's an easy read, and it's a very easy skim, and I linked it in the description. I found it where you can read it for free, so you don't have to buy anything. So if you read the um, the case notes and the transcriptions from all the people who participated in the experiment, they all got pretty sick. Um, they all got, like, severely, severely, like, physical reactions. So I, I'm not a fan of that. But um, but I think I would push through it. If someone wants to build it, let me know. We'll do a field trip. Melissa Taylor wants to try it. We'll build it. Moon and Path Project Bluebeam coming up, or has it already started? Uh, I did an episode on Bluebeam, by the way, where I explain how it's probably not true and not possible. But not to say that, you know, there are dark forces beyond our government working against us. That's that's obviously true. Uh, Stephen B. was Brian Callum, one of the voiceovers. He wasn't. He wasn't. But Gino could probably get him if you'd like to hear him jump in an episode. Orphan Red, I built one. Collab? If you built one, Orphan, email me. And we'll figure that out. Tommy Rock, I read about the, the Vegas UFO crash, but I haven't seen much about it yet. But we can look into that. Is that going to work? Yeah, so that's Gork. So I've got a browser ready, so we can we can look into that. Uh, Dharma Renee, I think motion sickness meds would help. Probably would. Hop in, grab some Dramamine and hop into the mirror. Luma Hayes, yeah. Uh, do I know about Stephen Greer? I do. I've spoken about him a couple of times. I'm a fan of his work, but I, I don't like how much money he's been making the last few years. You know, when a DSDRN ready to make the mirror, let's do it. Yeah, Greer's making a lot of money from, from the UFO industry. So, and everyone's entitled to make a living, although he apparently makes a very good one. Everyone's entitled to make a living, but, um, but he charges thousands of dollars for you to join a be a part of a group with him where you, with your mind, explore outer space and try to make contact with aliens. And that costs thousands of dollars. But I don't know if anyone has made contact to date. Crystal got the message. We are all connected and we made contact with the watchers. We might have. Uh, Dirthead, story time with Gino tonight. Yep, there will be a story time with Gino, of course. Anthony Goodley, do you think there's any relation to the Mandela effect? You know, it's tricky, Anthony, because the Kozarev's theories of, of the ether, they're, I mean, they're pretty solid theories. Now, the experiments that he performed proved the ether exists, but his experiments haven't been able to be, they haven't been replicated yet. And mainstream scientists say that, you know, his methods were not, scientific enough and you know the he has a lot of naysayers is that the right word and it's okay to naysay but then just replicate his experiment then let's let's see but no one's no one's really tried it joe and emily favorite conspiracy go i don't know if you're asking me but my favorite conspiracy is that the moon is hollow that's 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 an episode that I went into 
uh, researching the moon is hollow. I went into it thinking this is the dumbest theory I've ever heard. And then halfway through writing it, I was like, mm, there's some, you know, there's some, some good points here. And by the time I was finished, I was thinking the moon's definitely hollow. That's not even a question. It's clearly hollow. So I'm completely moon pilled by that one. Banter ABC asking, what's ether? I'm assuming you didn't watch tonight's episode, but it's in there. But a quick recap. It's a field that exists everywhere. And time is an energy that affects that ether. And, um, you know, Kazarev believed that time energy through the ether is what powered the stars in the universe. Because he did, a, he did a, 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 an interesting experiment. He mathematically found, again, it's been challenged, but what he believed, he found that stars don't have enough mass to burn for as long as they do, for as hot as they do. So he didn't believe stars were actually nuclear reactors. He believed that stars were pulling their energy from, from the ether and from time energy. And he believed that's what powered the stars and powers everything. That's why planets spin in their orbit. Everything was spin with Kazarev. Everything was spin. Which, um, <laughs> Lee Lu, yeah, the force. That joke was in there early, but it came out. It felt a little too on the nose, but yeah. It penetrated everything. Um, the original J, Ether, Dark Matter, maybe. That's exactly right. That um, he had this theory of the Ether that was the prevailing theory about space for thousands of years, you know, since the ancient Greeks. But in the 19th century, physicists performed a series of experiments to prove that the that there was some ether some substance there and they couldn't find anything so they said well it's not there and then they moved on but since then we have the theories of dark matter which remember no one's had no one's proved that that such a thing it's a it's a guess that it makes sense dark matter emergent space quantum foam we have all these things now that physicists talk about it would it all sounds like the ether to me Kyle Harper, is this Home Depot trip really happening? Yeah, man, Kyle, if you're buying, I'm flying. Let's do it. Scorpwana, there's a glitch in the episode where it repeated itself for a second. Was this on purpose? It wasn't on purpose. I heard that too, but out of I think that was might have been a YouTube thing. Because I, for a change, I actually previewed the episode before I uploaded it like I'm supposed to. And I didn't hear that, but... um. As far as glitches though go, that was a cool one. It maybe you know maybe it caught my attention. Four thirty three four. Can you look into the Kandahar giant? Yeah, we've got an episode on giants coming soon. Someone was asking for Roswell. An episode on Roswell's coming soon. Hell again. Can you look at Freemasonry in Portugal? City of Lisbon suffered, and and it's gone. And it's gone. Uh, the, the city of Lisbon suffered an earthquake during the 18th century. It was rebuilt by a Freemason to look like a ritualistic symbol. I haven't heard that, Halligan, but email me um, or put that in the tips line. I'll definitely take a look at that. Anything anything Freemason related is fun. Lee Dillon thinks we're the alien's ant farm. Might be something to that. So a couple of weeks ago, I told you that I came across another whistleblower and it's interesting because before grush i think that's how you say his name before david grush blew his whistle this this guy on 4chan said that he worked for um ufo recovery team he said a lot of the same things that grush is saying but the guy you know 4chan is like I mean, if you know if you know what 4chan is, you know what I'm talking about. But it's, you know, think of Reddit, but way darker and way meaner is 4chan. So there's a lot of crazy stuff on there. And I and I think he was in the in the in in the X channel, which is where the craziest stuff go. Uh, but I found his so so he just kind of did an AMA and said, I, I'm, I worked I'm, I worked for in um, alien aircraft recovery. I'm dying of liver cancer. So I've got nothing to hide and nothing to lose. Ask me anything you want. And he answered questions for like three hours or so. 
he didn't sound super scientific, to be honest, but a lot of the back and forth, the questions and answers were interesting. And, um, and I've got, I've got his questions and answers up there and ready to go. If that's something that you, that you want to see, let me know. Okay. 4chan isn't that bad. I like 4chan. I'm not hating on it, but, but Holly, you know, that you gotta be, you gotta be tough to, to live in 4chan. Brentley Bauman wants Hecklefish for president. You know, speaking of Hecklefish for president, hang on one second. Just wait. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. If you really want to support Hecklefish's candidacy, consider buying a Hecklefish for president mug. You can get these at shop at thewifiles.com. They're not expensive. We keep the prices low. And um, and that way you can support his candidacy. So let's get him up there because this this election season is going to be weird. It's going to be weird. Um, Solomon Gray, there's another man. He's debating leaking it too because he's retiring. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to. More leakers is better. Monster 1026 wants an electric universe episode. That's is coming. That's on the short list. That let me see. Jen Jen's not at her desk, but then that, that may have already been sent out for research. I needed to put some time between um, simulation theory and electric universe because it's it's a it's very similar. Um, Rogue asking, what about the Vegas ship landing in the backyard on May first? Please saw lights in the sky and caught on body cam. I I saw a video of the lights. I didn't see the body cam footage. I don't know if YouTube will let you paste the link, but um, but we can check that out if you want to check it out. It's just. Uh, Gino's, Gino's got links. Thumbs up. Gino's got links. All right. So, so we can get into that. Uh, Jordan Saunders do a Bob Lazar. Uh, Jordan, I stay away from Bob Lazar because he's been covered so much for so long. What has he been doing at it 30 years or more? And then he was on Rogan for hours and hours. So what can I bring to the, to the conversation that you, that you don't already know? Cause that's something very important that I do with every episode and sometimes it's harder than others, but I will keep working and researching until I can find information that I'm pretty sure that you didn't know already. Like crop circles. I stay away from that episode for a long time for that reason, because what new information could I bring? Uh, but you, you watched it. You saw that we brought some new info. Sandwich. How does the time travel work before you're actually born? At the Wi Files. Uh, it's, it, it wouldn't even, according to Kazarev, you wouldn't really be traveling through time. You would, you would, you, it, he, he believed time existed everywhere, past, the present, and the future. So it, it's, it becomes very esoteric, almost philosophical. It's not like you step into a box and come out at a different time. So that's what I was getting at a little earlier is Kazarev's theories of, of the ether are very interesting, but they wouldn't, necessarily work with multiverse theories. Although I guess they could. I guess you could make multiverse work with everything because maybe there's just a multiverse of ethers. Man, I, I, I wish there were physicists around now who would take that stuff seriously so you could have smart people looking into it. Hi, Rebecca Temple. I see you. Bob Lazar, lizard people, very... Very funny. Uh, Heb Sparks, thoughts on the observers? So, Heb Sparks, uh, Sarah Rose, you don't travel through time. You, you look through it like a window. That's that's kind of what Kazura was, was thinking of. So, about the observers, there are a lot, the, um, the participants, their transcripts were very interesting. They were fun to read. But they actually took me out of the story more. They made me, they made me believe it less. Like Nikolai Kazarev's theories, his scientific theories, totally made sense. But then when we got to the people, you know, a, a lot of them they had the same they they spoke with the same idioms, so it felt so it read kind of like suspicious, maybe made up. But then again, it was translated from Russian, so the translator could have just said, "Well, that's what it, that English is, is the closest thing that it means." So I so I didn't I didn't love the transcripts, but you know they weren't scientists. The people who went through the mirror, they were just folks. 
So if someone says, what did you feel? They're going to say, well, I felt, you know, I felt sick. But um, aside from a couple of people, we don't see the questions that they're being asked. So I don't know if they're being prompted. No, it's one thing to say, what did you feel? And that person says, I felt like I was floating. I felt like I was flying. I, I felt like um, I was looking into another time. But if the question is, did you feel like you were floating? Did you feel like you were flying? Did you feel like you were looking into another time? And then it's like, well, yeah. But there are, I think, two where you see the, the back and forth, the questions and answers. Sandwich wants episodes on different dimensions. That's a tricky one to do, Sandwich, because it, if you mean dimensions like as far as physics are concerned, that's an episode on string theory, and I don't know how to make that fun, and that's a hard one to get right because string theory is a real theory for now. Andy Manis, can you do an episode on astrology connected to the phenomenon in this episode? Um, the crop circle episode maybe um, maybe proved astrology is real. I don't believe in astrology, but um, there was some interesting research. Veronica Lake, Valiant Thor, we covered Valiant Thor. The whole episode on him. Spoiler alert, I debunked it. Gallia thinks it's also interesting. I'm, I'm glad. I think so. Mega Johnny, what happens when you take a Tesla ghost radio into a Kazarev mirror? By the way, Tesla believed in the ether as well. You know, when he when you talk about zero point energy, he was talking about that a, a field that we that is full of energy. So he was talking about the ether. I don't know if he called it the ether. As he was a little bit before Kazarev's time. But it was it was literally called the ether since Aristotle. Tesla wants the Phoenix Lights of 1997. That's another, that's another one that I don't know what's new, Tesla. I can just I can just tell the story and show the pictures, the video of the lights. But um, but I don't know what what information is new that I can dig up. D Saturday of White Antarctica. Um, D Saturday, look for the episode called How Operation High Jump. I cover um yeah, I cover Antarctica in that episode. See neutrino ice cube collector. I like it. Ghost Raider, Kazar of Mirror, DMT. That's the mix. That sounds like a party, 3G. Blaine TR3B Black Manta. Could be a fun one. That's the experiment experimental aircraft. The triangle. It could be a fun episode. Uh, rogue gum shield. Um, that's that's called the hadron collider, not the hard-on collider. So little gets a couple of characters switched there. You may want to make, don't make that mistake in mixed company. Uh, Dash, how about George Van Tassel's Integratron? I'm glad you asked for that one because I've always been fascinated by that story. It's been on my list since the beginning of the channel. Uh, I just have had trouble finding interesting hooks on it. The Integratron, which I'm assuming most most of you don't know. Well, let me see if I can Integratron. How about Joshua Tree? All right, this is the Integratron. So George Van Tassel was a was a wacky, brilliant guy who built this machine and you can't really see it from the pictures. Can you see it at all? Yeah. But all of this, can you see my mouse? Yeah. All of this around here, this is at least it was all copper wire spun in a spool, you know, kind of like how Tesla would build, how he would build generators. So the Integratron, you know, has, it has all kinds of legends and rumors what it what it was. Here they say it's a sound bath, but some people think it, it it's some type of time machine. 
some anti-aging device, which didn't help Van Tassel. But I think it could be a fun episode. I just got to find a little bit more. Because he was an interesting guy. You know, he used to camp out in, in the middle of the desert with, with nothing. Instead, he would talk to, you know, native spirits. He'd go out there and blow up rocks. He was a weirdo, but um, but those are my favorite people. Uh, Cyberash3000, what about the suicidal dogs off, off the Overton Bridge in the UK? I don't know if you're asking if I should cover that, because I did. Suicide dogs, I covered that. The dogs, are, the dogs are just jumping off the bridge to their deaths, and nobody could figure out why. So the um, the theory was it was the I think she was like she was the the lady of the lady in white or the lady of Overton or something. This this widow who lived and died in the castle that's there, and you know the 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 legend is people see her ghost walking around, and she was killing the dogs for some reason. I, you know, I don't know why, but, um, but a scientist looked into this and he found that, um, the area around the Overton bridge was full of minks and minks have a smell that's irresistible to dogs, especially long nosed dogs that, you know, good sense of smell. So his theory was they were, they were jumping off the bridge cause they were just going crazy from the smell of the minks which is a fine theory. I'm I'm okay with that theory, but the question is then, well, what about the you know the bridge a half mile away up that way and then the other bridge? Because there are bridges all over the place just like this, but dogs aren't throwing themselves to their deaths. Idiot dog walkers case solved, and people walk their dog. Oh, I I wouldn't walk my dog on that bridge. So Cyber Ash, we um we have an episode on that. Andy Manis, uh, finally watched all the episodes. Do you have any YouTubers you can recommend that, that you like to watch? I don't watch a lot of content like the Y Files, to be honest with you. You know, I, I like Joe Scott. Um, I like Corsetti at, at uh, Bright Insight, you know, for weird stuff. But that's that's really about that's really about it. You know, I didn't know Mr. Mythos covered this story so recently until it was too late. Because remember, all the all the suggestions come from you. So just said, all right, you want this one, I'll do it. And then Mr. Mythos came out with it. I was like, ah, I would I would have skipped it. But his channel's good. It's a very different experience. Watch the Y Files of Mr. Mythos. Very different experience, but his channel's very good and he's very thorough. You know, he really gets into it. He's a he's good, he's a chill personality. Uh, King Biggles, you ever watch Mr. Ballet? No, I'm not really into that. If you mean Mr. Ball and uh, I don't really, I don't really watch Mr. Ball as much as I used to. But if there's a story that comes across there that I that I'm interested in, I'll I'll, I'll definitely check it out. He's one of those guys that I I kind of put on in the background, as opposed to sitting and staring at. Davina wants an episode on Winchester Mystery House. Could I I could do that one? I don't know if it's enough for a full episode, but that's that's a very that's a debunkable story. Which I like those. Good twist. All right, Sandwich, what are you talking about? I can't find the episode. Are the name of the one where they actually live in the planet and take off the diet of the beings? What's it called? I don't know. I, I don't know what that is. Can this is clearly not Google Maps, a professional please? operation. I got lost and ended up in wacky. Jonathan, Jonathan, Brian, do you know Suspicious Observer? Yeah, I know that channel, and um, I, you know, I watched his channel quite a bit researching the um, the Carrington Carrington event episode about you know, the solar apocalypse because he covers a ton of that stuff. But he's one of those channels that. There's, there's, he's got the one side and his side is the doomsday side. It's a very dark channel, you know, so you, you can't just, you can't watch 
his channel for it's hard to binge because it's because it's very dark and depressing and and i i've never seen him give the other, other side or you know maybe we can avoid this catastrophe if you know i tr i when i have those dark episodes about the end of the world i try to end on a light note if i can you know a message something relatable something fun because even if it's a good episode and his and his youtube channel is good you know it's thorough the stuff is there, but even if you're watching content that's produced well and hosted well, well written, all of that, if it's dark content, you still walk away, away from that experience with that dark content kind of at the last thing you've experienced. And I don't want that to happen to you when you're watching The White House. I want an episode to be over, even though it might have been dark, but what you take away is Hecklefish had some funny lines and we end with be safe, be kind and all that stuff. And then hopefully you watch another one. Bill Wild Wild watches the Wild Files more than Rogan. That's a nice compliment. Rogan has a pretty big audience, from what I hear. I'm not really sure. I haven't never heard of him before recently. DJ Broyd looked like Robert Downey Jr. I've heard that before, but remember, I'm I'm two inches taller than he is. Undisputed Skimwalker Ranch or nah? I, I've consistently said nah to that. Let me look down at the producers. Skimwalker Ranch is that one that we're, uh, they're nodding, so that's coming. I've consistently said nah to that because it's been covered so much. So it becomes a challenge. We got to find something new. And I'm not researching that one, at least not, not yet. I'm just listen. Listen. Well, it's snack time down there. Yep, there she, there she is. Snack time. All right. Calvin Lyons, John Hutchison, the Hutchison effect would be awesome. He's an interesting dude. Very eccentric. Now, you should see his apartment. I haven't been there. He hasn't invited me over. I, you know, he was on a documentary I watched. But the Hutchison effect is anti-gravity. So, which he got to work. But, you know, he's not a mainstream guy. Uh, Piger 2, what did Hecklefish say in Russian? Subtitles are there, man. Got to look it up. DZG Prime, can, we, can you cover the Harp Project? Covered that a few weeks ago. Jesse Ingerson is here. Good to see you. Peter, where's Gino and Victoria? They're down there. They're on deck. Jen's there too. Don't forget her. Tracy, you what about the military looking glass? I don't know. I don't know that by that name, but if it's a, if it's military looking glass, I probably know the story. So you'd have to give me a little bit more. Father Ryan says hi, Gino. He can see you. All right, so. So David Grush, has everyone, has everyone seen his interview? Has everyone seen his interview where he's the whistleblower, um, retired from the Air Force? I'm just watching the chat. That's why I'm looking down there. Some of them, as Creel has seen some of it, his interviews. I think the, the most thorough one was uh, the one on News Nation. Saw Grush. James Lewis, Planet Serpo, did a whole episode on that, James. Stephen Coley, Rocco's Basilisk. That's been on the list, but again, that's a, that's a dark, dark, dark one. That's one of those stories that it, it, once you read it, once you learn the story of the Basilisk, you go mad. But you don't know until it's too late. So I started writing it. Uh, do an episode on BlackRock, Pi Media? Love to. Can't do that. Can't cover BlackRock. Can't talk about that BlackRock or Vanguard or and what they're doing to the country and to the world. Can't talk about it. You know, YouTube is Google. And if you're watching on Facebook, Facebook is Facebook. BlackRock has a ton of money invested in these companies. And if, if you don't do what BlackRock says, you don't uh, you lose their support.
one thing all fish know is the only way to not get caught is to keep your mouth shut. That's a good point. All right, so I just saw it up here. Duh, 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 duh. Where are you? It's going too fast. But someone said that like, Grush is a psyop, and I, I tend to agree. I don't like his story. I don't like his his look on the interviews. That's why I asked if everyone has seen it, because I'll, I'll play some of the interview if you want to see some of it, and we can talk about it. Randoir, if you if you bash BlackRock or Vanguard, you cease to exist. Yep. Yep. That's true. All right. Come on. Get up there. Get up there. Oh, well, let's see if we get we can get some sound. Uh, one of the most trusted former intelligence we think sound? It's defense and intelligence establishment. Yes, I was. You were trusted with the most intimate secrets. Yes. Grush sitting down with award-winning investigative journalist Ross Coulthart, who's well, reporting for News Nation and has spent years reporting on the UFO yeah, question. What conclusion did you come to at the end of your time on the UAP task force? Uh, the UAP task force was refused access to um, a broad crash retrieval program. When you say crash retrieval, what do you mean? Uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft, if you will, non-human, exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. We have spacecraft from another. All right. So a couple of things. Um, he, everything he's telling us, he didn't see himself. Everything that he that he says happened, he heard happened. From, he, he never saw a spacecraft. He only heard about it. Um, he says he's seen documents, but he doesn't have them. So we don't know if he's telling the truth. And everything he's saying has been cleared by the Pentagon. So he's not blowing any whistle. If you, you know, it's, I see it's a whistleblower. He's not a whistleblower. Every, his, his entire story has been approved by the Pentagon. And uh, so if he, so what happens is you, you, you're going to blow the whistle. So you want to go talk to the media. This is not just with UFOs, with anything. You're, you're retired military. You want to talk to the media. You want to write a book. Um, you're, you, you, you're, you know, you're like a technical consultant on a movie, on a video game, whatever it is. You're retired military. You're going to do that. If you had certain clearances, so I think he says he was top secret clearance. So TSSIC, if you have that kind of clearance, you have to go into the Pentagon and write out everything that you're going to talk about. If you're writing a book about your life, you know, or what you worked on, before you submit to the publisher, you submit to the Pentagon. And they go, yeah, nope, nope. You get rid of that. Nope, nope. So before Grush comes out and does his media tour, he, he he gets all that information clear with the Pentagon. So I don't know how that's blowing the whistle. I also, I just, I don't like his, um, Steve O says Doty 2.0. It's something I wanted to tell you is when I hear Doty talk, Doty's so, Doty's smooth. You know, maybe it's just because he's been telling the story for so long, but we've seen Doty, Doty interviews. I mean, I found some that are 30 years old, right? Yeah, I found interviews with him from the 80s. Smooth cat. Um, Elizondo, right? When he talks, feels like he's on your side, you know, on our side, but he's not on our side. Richard Doty's not on our side. This guy reads as not on our side, but not as slick. Other species. We do, yeah. How many? Quite a number. You're kidding. So, no. I, you know, I'm, I, don't, I don't really get into analyzing body language. But if I was going to, he's kind of a case study. You know, he does a lot of, so aliens exist? Absolutely. They absolutely exist. And you're allowed to say all this? No, I'm blowing the whistle. They, I can't say any of this. You know, so he does a lot of that. 
a lot of other a lot of other visual cues that if you're trying to see if someone was lying, he's giving off the cues. I mean, that's a cue right there, the tight tightness in the sides of the mouth. He's got some hard swallows in there. He's got a lot of like crushing the eyes closed. So, you know, those are signs of anxiety and stress. Now, he could just be nervous because he's on the news. Um, but he's an Air Force combat vet who saw action. So uh, this is scary. That's the thing. He's, I mean, his credentials check out. He's Air Force. He was intel. He worked in intelligence. He definitely, he definitely saw combat. A daydream believer. So it's all about money then. Anthony Good, Goodly body language. <laughs> Infinite Adam played the video backwards. That would be interesting. So I. To me, it reads as as rehearsed. I thought it was totally nuts, and I thought at first I was being deceived. It was a ruse. People started confiding in me. They approached me. I have plenty of current and former senior intelligence officers that came to me, many of which I knew almost my whole career, that confided in me they were a part of a program. Just keep your eye on the head, Bobs. This is very strange. Big bad, ard, 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 big bad, ard wolf. He seems like he's acting. Yeah, it seems kind of, it seems like he's got his talking points and now he's delivering them because he uses a lot of the same terminology. But then again, he's military, so they're going to use the same terminology. But it feels very rehearsed and it feels like he's just giving his talking points and he's not comfortable enough on camera. Like Dodie is so slick, right? Dodie, I mean, if you don't know his his story and his history, Dodie's very believable. I mean, his interviews are so fun to watch because if you just take yourself out of knowing that he's, you know, one of the villains of the, you know, of the UFO community, if you forget that he's a villain, he's very fun to listen to. He's very believable, especially now that he's that he's an older guy. It's like. It's like crazy grandpa telling you alien stories because that he, that he knew, knows about when he was there. But uh, David's not there the program. yet. I've never heard of it. And look at the head they, bobbles. They told me based on their oral testimony, um, and they provided me documents and other other proof that there was in fact head bobbles, lip smack, hard swallows. So he's got dry mouth. Is he just really nervous? So if if I'm running the interrogation. I say, keep this guy on ice. This guy, this guy's no, this guy's lying. But, Program you know. that the UAP task force was uh, not read into. Grush alleges the U.S. government has recovered non-human craft for decades. He's filed a whistleblower complaint saying he gave what he calls the classified proof to Congress and the intelligence community inspector general. News Nation has. So that's going to be the big thing. The evidence that he gave to Congress, because Congress is, is looking at it and is going to have hearings on it. So they think that there's enough there to talk about it. So that's good. But, but if I'm blowing the whistle on something, I'm going to, I'm going to give you everything first. I'm not going to give it to Congress first. And I'm certainly not going to clear it with the Pentagon. So what he's giving to Congress has been cleared. Pentagon believes that whatever he's saying or giving is not a threat to national security. It's not a concern of theirs. And remember, Pentagon, Air Force deny all of this. They say none of this is this is all fantasy. It's confirmed David Grush's credentials and resume. We've not. If you're right, if you're telling us the truth, mm -hmm. everyone, the entire American public has been lied to for decades. Yeah, there's a sophisticated uh, disinformation campaign targeting the U.S. populace, which oh, yeah? is extremely unethical and immoral. You are so is it saying to the human race for the first time an official intelligence representative at a high level from the U.S. government is saying publicly, we are not alone. We're definitely not alone. Absolutely, the data. Do you see from they we have a reverse angle? He goes, We're definitely not alone. What is Lickly? We are not alone. We're definitely not alone. Watch. Absolutely the data points absolutely that we're not alone. Yeah. Do we have bodies? Do we have species of what? 
Well, Don't naturally, um, when you recover something that's either landed or crashed, um, sometimes you encounter um, dead pilots. And uh, believe it or not, as, fan as fantastical as that sounds, it's true. Do we see the shake again on it's true? As fantastical as that sounds, it's true. I think we got a liar here. I think we have a liar here, which means we have a psyop. So we've got a new we've got a new dose. It's also harder for people to wrap their minds around the concept of a crashed object from somewhere else. It's easier to. Right, I don't know if they showed her in the Chiron, but she's the reporter that that published that story. I think it was in the New York Times. Was it 2017? Where where I kind of they kind of blew the whistle on everything. To accept that, yeah, we see What's things in the Kane? sky that we can't explain. Journalist Leslie Kane broke Russia's whistleblower Leslie story Kane. this morning in the debrief. Miss Kane's career has been ma mainstream and credible. Having hey, her debrief is not mainstream or credible. It's fun to read, but it's but it's wacky. It's 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 a, all aliens all the time. Um, Leslie Kane, it was a big story that landed in the Times, but the Times was the only paper to pick it up because uh, other major papers couldn't verify a lot of the facts. They, they just kind of ran with it, her stories. And um, she gave an interview. I, don't, I can't find it on short notice. Yeah, if I knew she was here, I would have had it ready for you. But she gave a, an interview for, it was that Showtime documentary. You remember that? Not that long ago. I think it was called UFO. It was really, I mean, it was really good. It was definitely a good watch. Dodie's all over it. Dr. Greer's on it. Well, she says the quiet part out loud, and I think accidentally, is she she says in a way that her information, that the reason that she wrote the article was to get people to believe in UFOs and aliens. Um, something like enhanced credibility. It was something like that. Which to me sounds more like PSYOP. It sounds like Elizondo and gang, whoever you want to put in there, Christopher Mellon. Some people think he's a good guy. Some don't. I'm not sure. But um, so he, they put together it, you know, ATIP puts together the talking points, quote unquote, leaks them to the media. And then now we have a new narrative and that we've had a narrative ever since. And then we've got UF, we've got, Navy videos. And I don't think, oh yeah, here we got a little bit more. Don't know each other to make something like this up. So I've got to be blunt about this. No. You're not making this up. This no. is not a lie. No, absolutely not. Because everybody watching this right now is looking at your face. Mm -hmm. They're going, is this guy for real? I am for real. And I'm, you know, I'm sitting here at great personal risk and obvious professional risk by talking to you today. And just within the last 10 minutes or so, the Pentagon has oh, released. Hang on. Hey. And just within hang on. obvious professional risk by talking. Do you see that? Is I'm he at risk here? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in great risk. At great personal risk and obvious professional risk by talking to you today. And just within the last 10 minutes or so, the Pentagon has released a statement to News Nation about this report. They say today. All right, Scott Pilgrim says he's telling the truth. Hey, man, I, I, I want him to be. I want him to be telling the truth. And I said, I, I, I told you I'm not a body language analyst. I'm just saying we don't have a lot to go on with him because we haven't seen anything. We just have his story. So we have to look into it. And Scott, if you followed UFO narratives over the years since the 80s almost everything we know about ufos has been a lie fed to us by the military industrial complex and i don't say that as a tinfoil hatter i say that that's what has happened so we have to assume that it is that he is that that he is one of those we know that he cleared his information with the pentagon that's i'm not i'm not guessing that we know that he did that so he's telling so he's telling that he's saying that the military is perpetrating a fraud and a hoax on American people, but the Pentagon said it's okay to say that. Why? So 
So G- Gramian says, I know a guy who's known him for 10 years and he's credible. I hope so. I hope you're right. Um, Jacob, he doesn't seem very scared. They don't blow her mat, blow her mat or anything. Yeah. He's, he, he, his anxiety is not fearing for his life or his career. Uh, big Al way too relaxed for someone that feels at risk. Yeah. He doesn't feel at risk. That's not true. Now, um, look, I'm just, I'm just skeptical about it because I don't, you know, I, I, I expect them to lie to us every single time. I want it to be true. But that's what makes it so easy to pull one over on us is because we all want it to be true. But I don't think uh, I don't think it is. Only joking is Greer legit. I think Greer Greer was legit. I don't know if he's so legit anymore. Mark Johnson thinks it's a psyop. I I I feel like it's a psyop. Um Username is not with me on this conspiracy. It's, that's cool, man. Look, I'm not. I'm not here trying to run the guy down. I'm. I'm trying to. I'm just keeping the guard up, like we all should. He gave documents to Congress, so we'll just see what what he gave. We'll see what's there. But um, if all we have is his his interviews, and he's given a few of them, it's all it's all feels sketchy. Mike Sierra wants to look up the Snowden interview. What are we looking up? Uh, David, PSYOP covering up a PSYOP is a very interesting comment. Because you you, you only engage in, in a psychological operation if, you're, if you have a goal or an aim. Typically, that goal is to distract. So what are we, what are we being distracted from? That could be all kinds of things. Bill Wilde, some of the files Trump had. Um, and by the way, presidents don't have this information. They don't know the answer. So presidents don't know. They're not told. They're, they're called temps. Military calls presidents temps. Follow the Benjamins. I don't, uh, Barr was tweeting about this the other day that he feels like Grush has a um, like has a deal with with History Channel or or Prometheus. Prometheus is the company that makes Ancient Aliens and all those shows. He feels like he that Grush has a deal. Uh, clearly, Mike doesn't know that, but it's an interesting thought that that is he setting 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 it up setting the story up, you know, for a show. I don't think so. I don't I don't think this is the way to do it. And if he's hosting that show, he's got to got to get some media training. Um, but I'm watching the chat. What do you guys think? You believe we? I mean, we ha- we have a couple of believers here, and I th- I actually think that's great. Delta Tango, presidents have no need to know. That's correct. There's no need to to read a president in on any of this stuff. They're going to be gone. You know, for Pentagon, it they don't really, doesn't really matter. They throw a joint chief in there to run interference. They don't care who, who's in the White House. Every time there's budget cuts, the, the military goes up. Ryan Barnes he wants to believe. I do too, man. Jen's withholding belief. You know, I trust but verify. I think it's fine. Wolf Kinder thinks it's a it's a psyop. Caleb, this guy needs more training. Aaron Skinner, AJ, I want to believe, but I'll always be skeptical. I believe when I see it. Nowadays, anything can be fake. That's true, right? It get, doesn't it get easier and easier now? You could you could fake between deep fakes and and AI voices and stuff. You could fake anything now. We, we need the documents, and we need other people to corroborate. Now, we're coming up on an hour, so it's almost time to bring the gang in. Jen's probably going to want to do a giveaway. She's going to want to do a giveaway. Um, I have – let me see if I can, if I can show you. Oh, this is this is just something I found that I thought was fun. So this guy – 
sees a, a UFO over his house, right? And sees a weird light. So he shines his like laser pointer at it, and it shines green laser back at him. It's a, it's a crazy video. And the whistleblower from 4chan, which I'll talk about tonight if you want me to. I'm gonna, I'll ask again when we're done doing uh, housekeeping, but I'll ask again if you want to see, if you want me to go through the 4chan stuff. But before you say yes, it's a, it's a lot. You know, it's a lot. It's an hour of talking. But that whistleblower says the alien technology, it's lasers are a huge, huge part of it. Lasers, fiber optics. And he says that we, that technology that we have, our laser and fiber optic te technology comes from reverse engineering alien uh, tech. So Nate's a yes on 4chan. If you don't, if you don't want it, it's, it tell me it's okay to, to say no. To say that we don't want to, we don't want to spend it on. What if anything wants Gino's story hour? You're gonna get it. Gino even has pictures. He did his show prep homework. He's a, like a professional broadcaster, right? So I'll watch the chat, and I'll ask again in a little bit after we do some housekeeping. But here's the video: lasers. Guy shines a laser pointer at this UFO. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Oh. Tipo, es que debe ser un metal grande o un espejo, no sé por qué. No, porque se dio filete en negro. Porque para que getting again. Oh. <laughs> Look how accurate this laser is from from that far in the sky, right? Like if you take your laser pointer, it looks pretty cool, you know, when it's on the wall and the cat's chasing it. But if, if you shine it hundreds of thousands, hundreds or a thousand, two thousand, three thousand feet in the air, you're not going to get a dot like that. So, look, I'm not saying it's real. It could be faked. I'm just saying it's interesting, especially because I found this after reading the, the whistleblower of the 4chan guy who just talked about a lot lasers. And by the way, the lasers, the colors, they have a code that he said. He said, like, um, if if the... If the UFO is showing red lights, that's defense, you know, warning defense. Blue lights, uh, blue and white lights are scanning. But he said green lights were um, life forms, scanning or looking at life forms, I think. But, you know, we'll get it. We'll read it for sure later. But it's interesting that it's that it's a color. And green la the green lasers are less common, aren't they? See if I can get another frame here. Look, I mean, this it's very, very strange to me. Oh. Looks very, very accurate. But look, if anyone has found debunking on that, you could drop that in the chat too. Hey, there's Victoria, there's Jen. And of course, where's Gino? Is it where's Gino? And you guys are there? Oh, wait a second. <laughs> he likes to do that. Put us all on screen and then take off. <laughs> like. How's everyone doing tonight? Looks like everybody loved the episode, which is awesome. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he's going to talk about the aliens in Vegas. A little bit later. Um, good to see you too, Jonathan Schlegel. Hey, Father Ryan. William Welch, nice to see you here. Yeah, you know, the, the, the whistleblower guy is interesting because I sort of feel like, you know, it's kind of a wag the dog thing. Mm -hmm. So it's all being released now. Why? What are they trying to distract from? That's what I always wonder. Like, I feel like, you know, it's kind of a Wizard of Oz thing. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Like, look at look at what's happening over here. So. <laughs> Isn't it shocking, though, how well you can see out of those? Yeah, but I, I, it needs to have a little bit of a magnification. Well. 
Just uh, 10 minus nine. AJ, how does Hecklefish work? What's the process? I don't know. I just give him vodka and then he does his, his thing. Jinjin62, how about cattle mutilations? I covered cattle mutilations a little bit in the um, Dulce Base episode, Jinjin62. Check that out. Um, it's not a full episode on the mutilations, but it's it's the stuff that, that you're talking about, all the New Mexico mutilations. And we'll talk about that a little bit more on Skinwalker Ranch episode. All right, what's the word that happens? Um, the word is spearmint goldfish. <laughs> spearmint goldfish. All right. If you're new here, here's how it works. Every week we, we, two or three times we give away a $50 gift card to the Wi-Fi store shopped at the wi You want to support your favorite YouTube channel. We give away a gift card to the store. And what you do is the word you see on the screen, which right now is spearmint goldfish, type it exactly as you see it. No spaces um, in the chat as that's all you type. And then you're automatically entered to be chosen from random to win a $50 gift card. Is that right? Yes. And, um, and if they win, what, what happens? What do they, they come, do? they come to discord and enter in a help desk ticket and give me their name and email and I'll get it to them. And it, they'll, you'll need their phone number, right? Cause you call them and talk them through the process. So Victoria <laughs> will call you and it's part of the prize. You only get 20 minutes with her. So spend it wisely, but you can talk about whatever you want. It's a good listener. And it's a great perk. <laughs> So, I mean, here's something you get on shopthewifiles.com. Shopthewifiles.com. This is the Illum Illuminati mug to celebrate Mr. Naughty. <laughs> Batteries go in there. <sighs> Crab Cat T-shirt. I don't know if you can see the hats. The hats are pretty cool. They're back there. Shopthewifiles.com. Or if you want to support the channel through Patreon, that's great too. As little as three bucks a month, you get a lot of perks, like um. We do a, a live before the premiere every week. We do a live stream. Let's, it's a lot, I call it a live stream, but it's it's more of a just a hangout on Discord where everybody could talk, hang out. You you go on camera and hang out with the whole gang. We do that before the premiere every Thursday for Patreon members, and then tomorrow morning at nine or nine thirty, we do a longer chat for Patreon members. Just um, we just hang out, and it's a very different experience than this. It, you don't get you don't get my live stream personality. You get it's a little different. All right, so there's over a thousand people spearmint gold fishing. Wow, is wow. that enough? Or in the meanwhile, while we're waiting, maybe we'll check out a couple of super chats. Okay. Joe Kerr's there. Any chance Hecklefish does a cover of Foil by Weird Al? That's a great one. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. He does not cover that, but but he may cover it soon. There's Mr. Peckerwood, everyone's, everyone's favorite avatar. Thank you for the $10 for the Hecklefish Guppy Mama Fund and to help pay down his Lake of America credit card bill. All right. Very hey, nice. pretty smart for a human. There's Christina Hinks. Her name feels good in the mouth. Blowing records right out of the vodka. Nosrovia, my friends. Nosrovia. Thank you, Christina Hanks. Christina Hanks is always there in the live stream mm -hmm. in the Patreon, uh, the Patreon chat. Yep. She could feel good in your mouth too. David Villays, 99. Tell us more about that incredible National Geographic video where the crop circle just appears under the two orbs. Is it real? Where did you find that? All right. The chat is spearmint gold fishing like crazy now, David, but I have those videos up. I like I have them right here in handy if you want to get into it. It's you know, it's more videos of the orbs around the crop circles. We have the, the, the orb creating the crop circle. I have videos of black helicopters chasing orbs. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the chat, but I'll, I'll check in again when we're done with the giveaway. Seafood mint dish will not win, but that is very funny. <laughs> uh, Mike D hard on collider. No, that, that, that's a typo. <laughs> 
Uh, I know, I know, Thang Spearmint Goldfish, that's right. Uh, Chance maybe Experiment Goldfish is wrong. That won't do it. That's funny. Uh, the Iron Drog Show, Paprika Beta Fish. <laughs> is funny. Niles Andrews' chat is full of robots. That is incorrect. These are folks. Uh, Docman 65, Spearmint Goldfish has a space in it, so you, you won't win. Try again. Get that in there. All right, David, so I've got those videos handy, and um, I'll check in later if we want to do those, if we want to look at the 4chan stuff. It's up to you guys. There's Jeff Wallace. Thank you for $10. Had a family thing tonight, but was able to watch the episode Monday because of Patreon. Membership has its privileges. Thank you. Appreciate your support um, on Patreon, Jeff. So what Jeff is talking about is Patreon members get the videos first before they go on YouTube. And um, they go on Patreon as soon as they're finished. So sometimes that's the day before, sometimes day of. But sometimes, like this week, it was Monday. So Patreon members had that, got to see this video, you know, days ago. Fleckromancer, thank you for $5. What's your opinion on Mick West? I found your channel after a recommendation from Matabunk user. I don't know any of these names. Do you know, do you know who Mick West is? I don't think so. Mickey Me, Spirit Goldfish Rhino is funny, but that's not going to work. Uh, Ven, Ven Lot's books, Tickle Trout. You may have to remember that one for the next one. Cajun Spice Fish, that's not going to work. Lave Love Crew, while watching, all I thought was Skinwalker Ranch. Skinwalker Ranch. All right, well, I, I'm told that I will be doing that. I hope the research is good. Tony, hey, got my shirt and hoodie and cap today. We'll send a picture to you and love the, love the show. Also, I live in Las Vegas. 20 years, I miss the trees and grass and flowers. I don't know. We have we have grass and trees and flowers in our neighborhood. We do. Uh, AJ, uh, sorry to interrupt here. Uh, I just Googled Mick West. I do know who he is. He's a skeptic who debunks a lot of the uh, stories, and he certainly – uh, was one of the guys who um, went hard in against uh, the new disclosure um, by uh, Drosh. Is that, that how you pronounce his name? Um, and uh, he said um, not just the uh, he wasn't really talking about like the um, the body language uh, stuff on him. He was just really going into, hey, they're saying. Uh, this that they ha have the 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 bodies of people, but not talking about where they are. And um, he um, he did go have like multiple things that uh, to debunk that story. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say most people are are think that this is a fake story, right? I mean, I where are you on? I think so. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I feel if it is a fake story, it's hard to pull the thread of what reason are they faking it and who is behind the fake? Um, so is he being paid? If he's being paid, the, the thing is the guy still has to live a normal life. He has to sit down to Thanksgiving dinner with his family. Who's asking him these questions. Hey, uh, what, where are the bodies and things like that? Um, you know, one of the, uh, an interesting thing is that, um, on Rogan, they were talking about it and, and he said, how come they didn't, he didn't reach out to me. I would have put him on. And then he said, well, maybe, maybe they, they didn't want that because I would ask questions, you know? Right. Uh, cause he, cause, cause Grush was, was, or is doing a media tour, which means he has, he has bookers reaching out to media saying my client is available to be placed for interviews or hits or whatever. And if you're doing that, a media tour, how do you not call Rogan? Of course. Uh, especially when you're about this topic of all topics. Right. Mm -hmm. what? Tell me something I don't know. Where Gino, oh shit, where he go? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, there he go. 
Jet set and betting at the regular scenes. Worldwide travel fiend with the green. Jack here, he's the bone who bears. Big bushes change smell. Thaw the air. Hey, hippity doppity doppity do. Where's Gino? Yeah, that's who. And yeah, it's true. Cause that's a dude he cares about. He brings around and pops and this holds up. Good there he goes. Where's, where's Gino? That's where's underscore Gino on Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you go follow him. He's, he's got fun feeds. Uh, you know, uh, that's uh, music by Space Goat, who is uh, on our Discord and uh, one of our uh, greatest followers. But I think everyone should have their own theme music. Everyone should have it. Can, will Space Goat do some theme music for Jenna Victoria? Oh, I'm sure he will. Uh, you know, he wasn't specifically uh, doing that as theme music for me. He just said, hey, I was thinking about you the other day, and I uh, sang this into my phone. He said it. So when I told him, uh, hey, I love it. I, I li like to, to play that. Um, he said, uh, I wonder how good it would sound if I really recorded it, because uh, he does have some professional chops, too. So interested in the new stuff that, that he could come up with. I, I like awesome. it. I was it. walking around singing it. Where's Gino? Hey, that's who... Danny Rodriguez wants to know, why does anyone talk about how Gino looks like Les Stroud, the Survivor Man? He does. I, I've gotten this a lot. And uh, at one of uh, <clears throat> Rogan's shows that I was sponsoring, uh, Les uh, showed up. So I got a picture of me and him next to each other. Um, <laughs> of course, it was a little later on uh, for him. So we didn't uh, look as much like each other as we did when we were young. But I used to uh, get that a lot uh, about you know 15 years ago. Does look like him. Blackbeard's here. You can make aluminum reflective like a mirror, but in the example shown in the video, the aluminum is not mirror like just bare aluminum. Would it work better? If it was reflective like a mirror. It would not, Blackbeard. And it's a good question. Kozarev experimented with all kinds of different surfaces and metals, and he found that aluminum worked the best for some reason. Uh, so I would um, like to say. You know, I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to say, kind of mirroring what you were saying earlier, if someone builds that or has access to any of that, I will spend eight hours in there. I will be happy to document the entire thing, find us a way to do it, and I am go and I will go there the next week. Doesn't it, doesn't the Cuzzy Rev mirror seem like something that Rogan would have? <laughs> it, right. right next to the float, float tank and the, 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 the float uh, tank. Lunch. Mike D, you seem down on Luis Elizondo, but my fear is the government is now trying to discredit him by using known UFO influencers. Am I wrong? Mike D, it's just that Elizondo comes from the um, you know, the industrial state. You know, he comes from he comes from from deep state, dark state, whatever you want to call it. Um so uh, he can't be trusted. I'm not saying he's lying or he's wrong, but I don't trust a word he says. Uh, everyone he works with, everyone from ATIP, all comes from intelligence. Carl Lawls, thank you for $10. Couldn't ask for a better birthday present. Love the video. I'm glad you liked it, ma'am. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And Victoria's going to sing for you now. No. <laughs> do you do not want me singing. <laughs> Megan Asher, sidekick? I thought we established in the channel trailer that Hecklefish is a co-host. He does, uh, he, he does, he does insist on that. This human knows what's up. Sunny A, congratulations on the new record. Yeah, that was crazy. 40, 43,000, you said? 43,148. And the video is sitting one of 10, right? It, it's in first place right now. Andre for Ferrari for, for Andre F for fifty dollars. They see me swimming in my waist. Send me money, cause you know that my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Wanna smell my bowl, it's dirty. Come and sniff my bowl, it's dirty. My poop is nasty. It's floating. Please tip me, cause you know that my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Cause you know my bowl is dirty. Wanna smell my bowl, it's dirty. Come and sniff my bowl, it's dirty. <laughs> You're dropping some rhymes. <laughs> see my, what did he say? See my, 
My poop is floating. <laughs> oh my God. Like how Andre, when, story. not if, you hit 100,000 regular live viewers, you could justify a YCon or the Y Files meetup. Love the show, and the community is badass. Is Rune Lady paying him? <laughs> once, a, once a real life get together. Well, Andre, we're still waiting to hear about Victoria and if she's going to have the room to host everybody. But we will keep you uh, keep you posted on that. Spirit Goldfish is up to 1,500 entries. Let's do it. Mike and Murph, $10. Good to see you. Hope you got some good rest. Here's a little cash for a sandwich. Appreciate you, man. I was not on vacay, though. But I appreciate the sandwich. <laughs> All right. I'm going to click her. Everyone got okay. their spearmint goldfishes in. Um, that's a. Yep, yep. I got you. I got you. Sperming goldfish is not going to win, Candy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Click draw. There's Steve. There's Voss, Xavier, Docs in there. Uh, Keith Brown, Cullen Skull, Mint Sky, TJ Young, Jenos, Joseph Smith, Unclaimed Soup, and John yeah. M is the winner. Yay! Congratulations, John M. Now you can get your own hecklefish for president mug at shopped at the wife house.com. Great, great way to support the channel or become a Patreon member. So, John, go to Discord. Um, so, what does John M have to do? Oh, John has to go to Discord, <laughs> put in a help desk ticket with his name and email, and I'll get it out to him tonight. Okay. And when he when when he has that that conversation with you as part of the prize, um, <laughs> one of his options is is you speak in an accent for him. Oh, great! <laughs> so, um, which would be which is your best accent that you do? Would you say Russian or French? No, <laughs> I'm southern. Italian, perhaps. Let's see. Let's see you. Let's see you do a Russian accent. No. <laughs> now there she goes. I did that with all. <laughs> all right. Congratulations to John M. <clears throat> Nicole's here. Did you hear about that UFO sighting in Las Vegas recently? Gino, what do you know about that? I heard about it. I haven't seen anything yet. So I put the um, um, the news clip in uh, the private chat on, on StreamYard if you want to pull it up. Um, and it does show, uh, it plays the 911 call that the kid, that the people made. And it showed, and the police before that call was made did see something in the air. Uh, and when they got there, they didn't, the, the, the kid said uh, he's, there are eight foot to nine foot humanoids in my yard. And um, and he's saying, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, I'm looking right at these things. Of course. All right, well, here it is. It is Let's see what we got. Your backyard. All right, here's the 911 call. It has big eyes and look or not, it certainly scared the people living on this property. Now, before we show you that video, listen to their call for help. There's like an eight foot person beside it, and another one's inside, and it has big eyes and looking at us, and it's still there. Okay, where is this on your property? Uh, uh, in my backyard. I swear to God, this is not a joke. This is actually we so used to be terrified of it. So there's two people or two subjects that are in your backyard? Correct. Two and subjects. they're very large. They're okay. like eight foot, nine feet, ten foot. I don't know. They're, they look like, they look like aliens to us. Big eyes. They have big eyes, okay. like, like I can't explain it. And big uh, mouth. They're shiny eyes, and and they're not human. They're hundred percent. They're not human. Okay. While the agents <laughs> investigators obtaining video. Got, gotta love dispatch. Uh, uh. Okay. All right. Uh. You know, we've got some footage. It's almost midnight on May 1st when a Las Vegas Metro Police officer's body cam catches this, something flashing low in the sky. 911 emergency. Minutes later. There's a, there's like an eight foot person beside it and another one's inside and it has big eyes and looking at us and it's still there. Someone calls 911 reporting two large figures in their uh, backyard. No, I'm still nervous right now. The 8 News Now investigators obtaining a... Bad boys, bad boys. 
what you're going to do. What that, That's what it, I want that episode. <laughs> Another officer's video as he sent to the Northwest Valley home. I have butterflies, bro. Everyone saw a shooting star. Then these people say there's aliens in their backyard. By now, it's more than an hour after that bright light. Officers meeting up with the caller and his family. What'd you see? It was like a, it was like a big creature. A big creature? Yeah, like one ten feet tall. I'm not gonna BS you guys. One of my partners said they saw something fall out of the sky too, so that's yeah. why I'm kind of curious. Did you see anything land in your backyard? Or they see like a big. That's what they say. They see like a big, uh, like a big something with light. What I saw right now, I do believe in it. Like Police a, walk into uh, the backyard to investigate, but Metro so, blacked out that like part of the video because it's considered private property. What's? Oh come on! <laughs> what? That's that's not a thing. That is not a that is that is not a, a, a protocol. But Metro blacked out that part of the video because that is not a protocol unless they requested it, which they did not. Property. So that's What's much clear. Yes. They're taking this call seriously. Hey, this might sound like a really dumb question, but did you guys see anything fall out of the sky? Asking others what they yes. saw. Uh, I would normally discount it as nothing. However. Um, Seeing as one of my partners said, you know, you know, shout out Vegas Metro PD. You, you hit me up with the, uh, hit me up with that body cam footage. We'll get that out there. You know, gotta censor it. They saw it too. Only reason I'm actually investigating any further. That investigation turning up no concrete answers as of Wednesday. Whatever. Oh, it's an awful lot of private property there. Yeah, in that video. That they're showing so much private property. I mean. Yeah, Carrie or Walker whoever said, fell into that yard. No cell long... phone footage in this day and age. It's just day and age. No, I mean, Gino of all people sat and watched the UFO for like 30 minutes and forgot to take a picture until it was too late. Okay, Not but if you years. had the presence of mind to call 911 and say there are aliens in your backyard and you're looking at them, why would you not have somebody else have a cell phone? That's why I would be like, record this, guys, because they're going to think we're lying. Oh, uh, Joey thinks that this is BS. Uh, control three, control free. I don't have any Vegas connects specifically. Um, KPN 5000 is AJ Gentile, a Jew. Look up my last name in the dictionary and you, you tell me. <laughs> uh, Boo Boo says Gino had good weed. That's that's true. Uh, Elliot Hertz discuss uh, Dave Grush. We did that for about a half hour just before you got here, my brother. I'm sorry. Just rewind. David Willis says spearmint goldfish. Uh, Dash says this is complete BS. Username is one is 10,000% with Jen. You know, Andrew Jacob, please make a vid about Montauk Project. I did. You, that's on the channel. You can look for that. Um, do a search for Preston Nichols. What the police uh, Mike, Sierra, all, Mike Sierra, all this footage is blurry. There's better footage on 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 the twatter. You got I, someone's got to link me to the twatter. This is this is all. This is what I got. Gone within minutes. Oh hey, if, the, if those if those nine foot beings come back, don't call us. All right, deal with it yourself. <laughs> that, I ain't dealing with that. <laughs> so yeah, this is quite weird. Brian was saying during as. <laughs> Anything else with that? But why didn't they ask? Know. Why didn't they ask the kid where did they go? How did they leave your backyard? What were they doing? Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a very thorough. <laughs> but but we only saw a tiny piece of that. I'd like to hear. So we heard the the nine one one call. I'd like to hear what dispatch said to the radio car. <laughs> right? Like, gosh, guys. One Adam 12 responding. Control Mark freak is saying the kid put out a video. Oh. But I don't know. Double moon child. No, I'm not a Mormon. I'm not a Mormon. And look, Mormon, Mormons, worst, not worst, weirdest religion ever. Nicest people you ever meet. I got to tell you. Mm -hmm. If I'm hiring folks, I hire Mormons. <laughs> They're nice. They keep the bathroom clean. They don't cause trouble. <laughs> so when did this happen? 
Uh, May 1st. Yeah. The call said May 1st. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, this month, this month, I guess. Yep. But it, it was just released, right? Yeah. Right. Well, I'm like, that's the slowest internet crawl ever. I, I only discovered this last night, and I think I saw Vic discovered it last night at the same time as me, so it must have just been released. Discord was a buzz at 1.30 in the morning my time. <laughs> that's that's what, what happened. I was driving in through the desert uh, to Vegas, and I got a text saying, did you see this yet? You got to talk about this. So I got that same text. I got a text at 1.30 in the morning. Someone's so excited about it. Scott, R saying there's ring doorbell footage of the crash as well. I don't know if you guys can put links in the chat. You could probably only do it if you're a mod. Right. But if you have if you have links that you want to share with us, you can you can jump into Discord. I just I put a link to Discord in there. It'd be fun to have you join Discord anyway. It's a lot of fun. Long Reach one says so tall grays. I was thinking the same thing. It could yeah, be tall but grays. I mean, it's it's just weird because Again, it's their kids, their younger kids who live on their phones. So if they have footage of it, why wasn't it on the news? Dash know. Riprock, Scientologists are more bizarre. As people, that's true. But as far as religions go, Mormonism is pretty interesting. I look, I'm not saying it's bad or it's wrong. It could be all. Joseph Smith could be right about everything. And so could David Grush. The talking ferret. Wasn't it a talking ferret in the woods that talked to uh, Joseph Smith or whatever? Okay, I admit I'm a little lost here. Can someone help me out? Um, I feel like I'm in a dream where I'm the only sane person, or is it a nightmare? No, okay. okay. Jen is going to go ahead and tell the, the Joe Smith story for us. This should be fun. Go ahead. I don't know the whole story. I know something I, about. I know you don't. Joseph Smith <laughs> was walking through the woods and saw like a white ferret that talked to him. And yes. And he founded. Uh, hang on. <laughs> that is true. The best thing to do, rather than have Jen retell it, which would be entertaining, is watch the South Park episode on it. Well, Nick says he's Mormon and there was no talking ferret. If that is true, Nick, then I apologize. That's what I heard. Right. There's, there, were, there were angels. There were not ferrets, but both are very cute creatures. All right, so I'm checking out the chat now. I've got um, I've got orb videos. That we could play with, or we can go through the 4chan whistleblower with alien aircraft recovery. Let me know what you want to do. In the meanwhile, we got Buzz Darkens here, three Mastiffs, a couple of sheets of aluminum, and a torque wrench. What could go wrong? Thanks for another great episode. What's the worst that can happen? Thanks for the support, Buzz. Soldier Vision's here. Bravo, standing ovation. Congratulations. Thanks, ma'am. 4chan's the St. Peter Veronica Lake wants 4chan. Uh, Avatar guy 4chan. 4chan looks like 4chan's gonna be the winner. Video. Greg Toberfest, appreciate the support. Down with vowels. Nicely done. First time tipper. The truth is out there. Thank you for letting me be your first. You always remember that. Acacia Gallagher, my goodness, amazing production. How about the sound design on that? How about the new um, music library? Uh, Jen, Jen's distracted. I'm looking at. Look she's, though, look she's, at our new she's reading about more. Kozarev mirror T-shirt. All right, well, come a little closer, but don't don't cause the chat to say weird things. Oh, so that's the Kozarev mirror T-shirts. Yes. The link to the kid is in uh, comments for us. Private comments. All right, I'll grab that in a second. All right, let's see if we could find it. Oh, there it is. $25. I, when they're not looking, I'll, lo I'll lower that. Don't worry about that. Yeah, so this is, this is how you can support the channel. This is my favorite one. I went to Mel's Hole, and all I got was this magic seal fetus. You guys remember that story? If you, didn't, if you haven't seen the Y files on Mel's Hole, that's, that's your next uh, assignment. That's a good story. I wear that one all the time. 
But I do find myself wearing a crab cap most of all. Yeah, this is the one I wear. That's your shirt. Nikki G likes the shirt. Well, grab one. And if you do, see, I'm, so I'm logged into my Google here, so you could you could see like my history. You could see the movies I've been I've been torrenting. Look, I will pay to see John Wick for. I will pay. I just don't want to. I don't want to. I'll wait until it's four ninety nine. I'm not going to pay nineteen ninety nine to watch it, but I will pay it. So if you do buy a shirt from shop.thewildfiles.com, which is a great way to support the channel, what you do is you send in the picture of you wearing it so we can get you up in the gallery. And if you do, you're, at the, you're in the credits at the end of every Y Files episode. Look at that. There's Murr wearing his Hecklefish shirt on Impractical Jokers. Shout out James Murray. Look at this. Hi, can you stand it? Can you even take yeah. it with the teeth? Um. I love it. Nice. Oh, yeah. Little Wi Fi's photo bomb. There's a Zeb, the Dark Knight, <laughs> on his roof. Oh, with the faces. Oh, I can't take it. Babies are so fat, though, aren't they? They're so cute and squishy. <laughs> So fat. Go back up. There's an R2-D2 wearing a shirt. There's R2 wearing his Sidonia shirt. That's a good R2, huh? That is a good R2. I forget who sent that in. But look at look at what he's got on his wall. This, this guy's serious. I see C3PO yeah. there. This guy's on with me for sure, hoping that Disney sells Star Wars back to Lucas, which is the <laughs> rumor. Can you imagine? That would be great. Give it back to George. He's the only one who could fix it. I hope he gets a discount. <laughs> he probably, it's, I don't, wouldn't think it's worth as much as it was. I could be wrong about that. It could just be, I could just have a bitter taste. Rune Lady, the that? White Claws brought me together with my husband to be General Chaos. Thanks for offering your brother to give me away. But that's reserved for 1047. Can he be the bud? Gino could be the bud tender, I guess. <laughs> if it's going to be that kind of party. I don't know if Victoria allows smoking cannabis in her home, but I guess if we stay outside. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Where was I? We got you. There's Rune Lady. Uh, David S is there. He's still waiting for that. This is not professional tea. Uh, that should be on your list, Jenny, along with the spearmint goldfish. But we're going to need Rob to come up with a spearmint goldfish design. I looked at the at the rhino's logo, hoping that it would be something you know fun that he could redo. But it's spearmint rhino doesn't have a very good logo. That's not what they're known for. Their marketing. For those of you that don't know, spearmint rhino is a very large uh, strip club here in Vegas. So that was where spearmint goldfish came from <laughs> no you don't need to look it up you don't know what's going to pop up on this a actually <laughs> i do <laughs> actually i do it's gentleman's club there you go all right i i, I pulled it down before that we see too much see too much boots oh hang on let me i gotta i gotta get turn that off that's i didn't see that the other day hang on yikes <laughs> Close that tab, I Chihuahua. <laughs> um, how do I? Where? Okay. Adios me, huh? Okay. Uh, congratulations, Rune Lady. Did, so that's 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 people finding love on the Discord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It all starts with drama. So there is love on the Discord. That occasionally there's some hate on there too, but mostly love. Mike Willis, uh, thank you for the $20 and for buying that ridiculously expensive Wi Files mug from shop at the So glad to see you guys again. I can't wait to get the heckle plushie. When Jen showed hers last week, my wife totally freaked out. She can't wait. Mike Willis blowing the whistle. The hecklefish plushies are coming very, very soon, as in a matter of weeks. We already got the prototype. It works. I don't, I mean, there's not that many of us here. Maybe we can just 
first of all, that it was a Patreon perk. Oh, that okay. The people that were in the Patreon chat before the uh, video got so we to can't shout. We can't. No, we cannot. Not even just peek it up a little bit from the. No, that that's <laughs> so for our Patreons. <laughs> all right, so Patreon perk. Another reason to join Patreon. As little as three bucks a month, a great way to support the channel. And 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 look, if you have the dough to support the Y files, which I appreciate, also look for some of your other creators that you follow on YouTube and 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 join with them too for you know two bucks, three bucks, five bucks a month with some of the other creators. It really helps us out because this is hard to do. B Herb 76, 499. I'm not sure I want to go back in time and watch myself wasting time playing video games and sleeping through school. Yeah, we'd all like to go back to our sixth grade self, wouldn't we? No. I mean, Jenny, would you be able to find your high school self? I mean, you were never in school. I mean, <laughs> you would just be looking all the mall. Um, but Jenny, were you voted most likely to succeed? No, I was <laughs> voted most absent senior female. Most absent senior female. Well, I, was. I still think you're the prettiest one. Well, thank you. Uh, when you're that pretty, you don't have to go to school. That's the lesson. Uh, well, I was, really, I was a late bloomer. Supposedly, the name of the illegal classified crash retrieval program is called Zodiac. David Grush is testifying under oath before the House Oversight Committee on Monday. Heads will roll. I didn't know it was called Zodiac. I'll look into that, David. He's testifying other, under oath, but... Oh. Did I Hang just on. do that? I'm sorry. Somebody did. All right, so you want to read that one? Cheapest big spender. Those new t-shirts should have people assume that time is a strict progression from cause to effect, but actually from a nonlinear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. <clears throat> yes. Judging by his avatar. What yeah. do we got? 10th sorry. Doctor and 11th Doctor? Uh, yeah, so you're changing back. it again? I'm going back to the one you were on. I'll go ahead and drive for now. There's <laughs> Rob Lewis, uh, Ray Lewis. Show was amazing. Are you going to build this thing? I wish if I had time to build it, I would. But maybe, maybe Jen could build it for us, and we'll <laughs> we'll live stream that. Tim Plummer didn't like loved. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate that. Appreciate the support. The original Jay had me driving home like I worked for for Pizza Plant to catch this premiere. <laughs> I appreciate that. Original J. Say Sirap, love the way you present. Open minded, but not so open your brain falls out. I'm trying, man. All right, I think we're gonna get gonna do some 4chan for a while. I know Jenny doesn't want to do it, but Aliens is not really your wheelhouse, is it? I mean, if we were gonna do uh you know, lawn mowing or cleaning hooves or pop popping pimples, you'd be into that. Am I right? Uh, no, yes, but like, it's totally fine. It's totally fine, she says. There she goes. And there's Victoria. I can, and what time is Gino's story hour tonight? Uh, I think we're doing it in the last segment after um, <clears throat> the last giveaway. After the last giveaway, I think we're only going to do two giveaways tonight, though. All right. After the second giveaway, it is. Because those are fun, but they do they, they do bring the show to a halt. Uh, Fortune Cookie Tarot by Annabelle. Uh, now my husband, Greg Toberfest. Hey, he just he just tipped as well. T we're t both spouses throwing money at the channel. Uh, this, this psychic needs to try this out. Proof is coming. Do it. Prove it. Katie Parker, entire family watching together. We love you, Hacklefish, and the Warrens lied. Love Maggie and Katie. Yeah, the Warrens lied. I'm sorry about that. Sean Calvin, great show. Love Taurus and Theory. Actually, uh, human. 
I want you to know I said you been. <laughs> Thank you for all the dough. Tip. <laughs> now we've got a whole hecklefish malfunction uh, here. Let's see. Malfunction. Thank you for that tip. Now I can finally join C Harmony and meet the future ex Mrs. Moriarty. All right. We're having having some technical difficulties. <laughs> but uh, of course we are. You think this passes for a live stream? Think again. Thanks, Chat. So Sean, Sean Clavin loves torsion theory. Yeah, I do too. And um we every, we all we learn that that light moves in waves, right? Everything moves in waves. But a wave is really just a very tight torsion spiral because we always see the waves as like that, right? But that's a two-dimensional representation of that. So everything is torsion. Jenny Novak, thanks for the awesome channel. Tippity doo da, tippity -a. My, oh my, what a wonderful day. Play He's, he wants to be on more tonight, apparently. So, he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah, I mean, what is, I'm going to have to see, well, I mean, what are you doing, buddy? You're in, why, why, why are you singing that one? Why? I don't know what's happening. He's he's being a heckle jerk tonight. Okay, so I guess it's me for a little bit. So just get a couple of super chats in there while I while I figure this out. Okay. He wanted, and maybe Gina, maybe Gino and Victoria want to read one too. I mean, okay. if hecklefish is not is not playing along, maybe we have to pull the hecklefish plushie. I mean, oh. we never know what he's gonna say. Don't say that. So Dickerson Designs, $30. Thank you very much. A poem for Lord Hecklefish. A shekel for my heckle as I ponder warping time. The thought of us in torsions twist just really blows my mind. Kisses for my fishes. Thank you, Dickerson Designs. That was lovely. Let's see. 870, A70 Garage, $5. Great episode as usual. I'm a fan of sound design. Ooh. Too bad he missed this one. I can tell you put a lot of effort into this episode. Too much heartbeat for me. Well, you know, everyone's a critic. All right, let's see. Uh, Raven, $30. Thank you, Raven. This was such an awesome episode. Are you really going to build one of these devices? Uh, we'll see. If AJ gets me the parts, I will, uh, I'll build one in our garage. Um, <laughs> I do need a new place to sleep. You do. <laughs> I'll build you a cozy red mirror to sleep in. Backseat <laughs> politician for ten dollars. This theory sounds like the alien interview where the alien says that traveling through space is traveling through time. I don't know that one. Um, I'm just gonna go through and delete the ones that I already read so that when AJ comes back. He doesn't read through them again. So give me one. No, I'm, st I'm still listening. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. Oh, it's Keith Eichley for $20. Thank you, Keith. Keith and Tasha here. Thanks, Tasha. Heading to an anime convention tomorrow, so getting to bed early. I know. We're very unprofessional. Very thought-provoking episode. Loved it. Also, how did he die mysteriously? Be safe, be kind. AJ, how did he die mysteriously? <laughs> oh, okay. He's working on his philosopher's stone. Uh, for our drums. Thank you for our drums for $20. Nice to see you again. So glad you're back. I was getting worried that all you guys were abducted by aliens. Either that or those dang old dad blasted crab cats. Man, oh man, quantum mechanics is cool and glad you have mentioned it. Thank you. Yeah, it's... Uh, this was a heavy. This was a. This was a heavy one. I'm gonna have to go back and watch this one again, just because there was a lot. There was a lot in there. So, 
let's see what we've got going on in the regular chat. Um, let's see, 1 million says point of lying is to get attention. So why would they lie and go missing during the time they have attention? This would be the time for them to capitalize and enjoy their 15 <laughs> Well, it would, it's just. This live stream is so unprofessional. Really, what are you even doing? Yeah. It, you know. <laughs> or we're, oh, for our drums is there. Did you read his? I did. Oh, okay. I thought you were listening. Right, well, I've been listening. <laughs> Maybe we'll get one more and then we'll get into, um, we'll get into 4chan. There's old gravy leg for ninety nine ninety nine. Whoa! See me swimming here. I got guppy payments up the wazoo. I just don't know what to do. I need a lawyer or two. Oh, human, please tip. Tip. <laughs> Go ahead and tip. I need you to tip. Tip. Human, please tip. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who said that? Jesus tap dancing Christ. Better every week. The premise story arc tension seriously better than any 90s network TV show, except NYPD Blue. All from a once little YouTube channel. Well done, amigo. Well, gracias, amigo. It it was a it was a little YouTube channel fairly recently. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. It's just been a win, really weird, weird year. Um, I'm gonna put up yeah. one more for you to read. Uh, J Dub, 1999. Thank you for the support. Should have emailed you about a film part I wanted to get. Film part I wanted to get for a while back. Probably can't afford you now. Great job building your channel. Excellent work. Is he trying to cast me into something? He yeah. is. So he, he should still email team at the yfiles.com because I. I have some back channels I could maybe talk to uh, somebody for you. Speaking of bad channels, uh, back channels, I might come home early tonight. Oh, <laughs> come on. All right, there they go. There they go. Uh, well, thanks for the reaching out, Jada. Uh, so they're saying team at the wifiles.com because everyone gets that email in case I miss it. All right, 4chan, 4chan. Uh, Jenny, can you pull that, um, pull J Dove's lovely super chat down? I can't find him in the list. She can't find him either. Got it. Got it. Um, all right, Fortune. Not the Spearmint Rhino. Get that's that that was work related. That was work related. Close close that tab. All right, there's not much to do setup wise here because uh, he gets into a lot of detail. And <clears throat> and look, Steve Green, Fortune, you guys asked for it. This it's it's a lot. It's a lot. So um, if you're into this kind of thing, go grab some coffee or cocktail, whatever, refreshment. If you're not into this thing, uh, check back in an hour. Rich says, take Jen to Applebee's, AJ. Maybe Jen doesn't mind a little Applebee's. She got no problem with Applebee's. Right? Right. Red Lobster? Fine. We like a crab feast. Crab feast macaroni grill? Fine. It's all fine. Chain restaurants are all fine. Chilies. Mm hmm Or sushi samba. Ooh. There she goes. David McKenzie, Spearmint Goldfish. A little late, my friend. Oh, sorry, that's not professional. Captain's log, star date 10-09-46.44. The After Files live stream has proven itself once again to be extremely unprofessional. Are you putting super chats up? No. 
No. <laughs> All right, not much to set up here because um, he gets gets into all of it. He's a he's not really a whistleblower because he's on, on 4chan. But he's former military contractor, part of the team that goes and recovers crashed UFOs. He's part of the team that comes in after they check for bodies and all of that. So he, he'll get into it at some point and talk about how he – He's heard that there are bodies, but I don't think he's ever seen any. So what we're looking at up here, if I can get to it, and there we go, is someone took all of his, the, the 4chan thread was a million miles long, so someone took just all of his answers. So it's kind of condensed. <clears throat> I have intimate knowledge of what the U.S. currently knows about UFOs minus the last two years, so he's been out. So he's from two years. He's been out of uh, the, the the scene for two years. He says UFOs are primarily unmanned drones. UFOs are built to spec each time they are deployed. UFOs are created by a mobile construction facility that hides in the ocean. Construction facility destroys anything that comes close to it and will disappear for days when approached aggressively. U.S. believes the facility has been active on Earth for at least a hundred years or much longer. So that's how he starts it off. Hey, Steve, and he loves the channel. Good to see you there, my friend. Elliot Hurst, Bermuda Triangle Hamburger Factory. Um, correct. That's what this is. That's exactly what this is. Dobby Debup, Disappear. Yeah, so this, he'll get into it later, but the location of this platform is Bermuda Triangle area, and that's why planes and ships and everything disappear from there because they get too close to this platform and um, Elliot's calling it a hamburger factory because it's, it, it, he describes it as shaped like a big hamburger, you know, I would say it's big flying saucer. So primary unmanned drones. So he talks about, and I'll, I'll get to it. I'm just, it's, it's a lot. So I'm going to try and give you the, the nuggets that I know as we get through them. And I'll just repeat myself later. Primarily a man drone. So he talks about how there used to be there used to be pilot, more piloted craft, um, but as our technology advanced, they were having more ships go down. You know, more <laughs> more UFOs go down. Probably around 1947 would be my guess. So they just started doing more unmanned drones. But he said there are some piloted craft from time to time. When he says built to spec, what he what he means is. The administrators of the factory, the hamburger factory, will say, all right, we need – we're going we're gonna to scan the North Pole, for example. So using their technology, their AI, the, whatever it is, we need, we're going to do – we're going to scan the North Pole, ice core sample, whatever it is. And then the platform will create the machine to order with the right scanning equipment, the right propulsion for the mission, and it will put together a package. And then it will seal up the package, and then it gets deployed from, from under the ocean. It goes on its mission, does whatever it's doing, scans for a day, a week, an hour, comes back under the ocean into the platform and gets disassembled. The data is offloaded or it's whatever streamed while, while it's on mission, but the, uh, the, the drones are destroyed. You know, he's not exactly sure what happens. He thinks that they're broken down to component parts and metal is, re is smelted or resmelted to be reused. And the reason why the craft that we see have these different shapes is because they have different scan, they have different equipment packages, different scientific scanners. So a lot of them are going to fit in a cigar shape, but you have some that are bigger, some smaller. So that's what he means by to spec. Fire away on questions. I'll answer what I can. You won't be disappointed. Um, I don't know what the question is here. It doesn't officially exist. I won't use, all right. It doesn't officially exist. I won't use the internal name on here either. So someone had asked him, what, do, who does he work for? Like what department, what company? And he says it, it doesn't officially exist and, but it has an internal designation, but he's not going to tell us what that is, obviously. People ask him, is it Oumuamua? If you don't remember, Oumuamua was that long cigar-shaped object that flew into our solar system and kind of defied physics. 
and then flew out again. Maybe I'll, I'll do an episode on that or part of an ep- or make it part of an episode because Oumuamua is an interesting object that has interesting um, attributes, but I don't know if it's enough for a full episode. Jenny, you're down there. We have um, on our list the R1 object that's out in the Kuiper belt. I think Oumuamua might be good to tack on to that. And maybe the episode is objects in our solar system that science can't explain could be cool. That actually sounds like a winner. That sounds like a 44,000 premiere to me. So, but he says, no, Oumuamua was not one of theirs. Um, is there a working theory on the origins? If so, care to elaborate? So quite a bit. We think the construction facility has been around since at least 4,000 BC. See sightings slash paintings from the early eras of history. Um, so he's talking about in a lot of even Renaissance paintings, you'll see stuff in the sky that look like UFOs. I mean, you see them in, in Egyptian carvings as well, but that's what he's referring to. Has any form of intelligible communication been established? Yes. It also depends on your viewpoint. They mostly want very little to do with us until we start to talk until we start to talk about war and nuclear options. It's one of the reasons why you see them so often at critical events. Now, that's true. In most of the um, nuclear tests, especially the earlier ones, we see objects in the sky over there where there shouldn't be. The, the one that comes to mind is, the, is the, ex- the explosion at Bikini Atoll. That was the big one, right? That was the big one, Castle. I forget what the name of it was, but there were a couple of UFOs there. So, so that he's talking about. They don't care about us. They're not here to even. They don't care. But they're not here to observe us. They have. They don't care whether we live or die. They don't care. They think of us like animals in a zoo. The look, or whatever, but it's not a thing to them. He believes, and he'll get to this eventually, that they're here for resources, specifically gold, and. They only will intervene when they think that we're going to do something stupid, like set off a nuke, destroy the planet. They need the resources. And what's interesting about the gold is if you go back to the stories about the Anunnaki, who are allegedly the first, right, the aliens that seeded humanity or whatever you believe about, about Anunnaki and Enki and, and, and those quote-unquote gods and Zechariah Sitchin's book, those beings were here for gold. So – that tracks. Now, maybe he knows that. You know, I'm not saying his story is true. I'm saying it's interesting. So there are a lot of nuggets about his story that track with Bob Lazar and and Zechariah Sitchins and and a lot of a lot of the people and the stories that we're aware of. Now, that could just mean that he knows all the stories like we do, and he weaves this narrative. That's you know, that's the skeptical point of view. And look, I probably lean that way. But if that's not so, then a lot of the things he has to say are very coincidental and line up with a lot of the theories that have existed for a long, long time. So he's saying at least 4,000 BC, see sightings, see paintings for early history. Um, any uh, communication? No, they don't care about us until um, it, we're going to destroy the planet. Do they know who or what is creating these craft? Yes, as mentioned earlier, the mobile construction unit is responsible for their deployment and construction. Um, any potential they are made by a higher branch of the government? Absolutely not. What allows them to fly so fast? What technology? Gravity manipulation and the materials they are constructed from. So he'll get into that a little bit later as well. Um, but it tracks with a lot of what Lazar says. We think the construction unit is driven by AI. The response time to threats is almost instant and usually very calculated and well thought out. You all should pay attention to this. The majority of UFOs, as I mentioned previously, are built to spec and purpose. This is why they're always different sizes. The contents and equipment usually mimic the intended purpose too. Is it related to that one under rock, that one Scandinavian country, the one that deploys with tectonic plates? Um, no, this one almost never leaves the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, BS governments have and have had for a while a- advanced anti-gravity crafts. 
You asked if the particular UFOs we study are the result of a foreign government, not if other governments have shittier versions. Speed alone tells us what we're looking at. So he'll get into it later, but he, he says pretty much that we don't have the tech. You know, we have been able to reverse engineer some of their technology, but not, not anti-gravity, not for lack of trying. They just can't get it to work. So people ask him, like, these UAPs we're seeing, are those, is that like a military test? He said, no way, we can't, can't do anything like that. Do the UAPs return back to the manufacturing unit? Yes, some come in and leave the planet, but usually very rarely. Usually the same number that comes in goes out unless special circumstances arise. It feels more like a carrier, but with construction capability. Interesting. What are the purposes of the UAPs? Surveillance of humans? The U.S. believes they're not here to harm us. They only seem interested in us once they realize we're destroying things around us, including each other. One of the officials in charge said something that stuck with me. They act like keepers of a zoo, uninterested in the daily life of wildlife until there's a problem. Right, I mean, if they're that advanced, why care about, about us? I mean, that's maybe hard for us to, to accept being the species that we are that's so self-centered. But if, if you're a million years ahead in technology, I, we're, I mean, we're, we're ants. Why would you care? It's like, oh, I'll have an ant farm. That's cool. But that's not why I'm here. That's, you know, that's an interesting. Uh, can I approach that facility without being attacked? The last unit we saw approach the facility didn't he even have time to communicate they were being attacked before it was over. What's buried under the Mesa on Skimwalker Ranch? Is that show even, is that show even legitimate? It seems uh, like some of the most legitimate research on anything paranormal I've ever seen in my life. And I'm very curious about what they seem to be finding. He says, no idea of the project, if any, is likely kept separate. Um, asked about elements, doesn't have any idea about that. The crafts we recover are built with numerous elements. Some aren't even obtainable here. So he'll talk about later that uh, that most of the craft are made with with metals that are mined here, but there are some metals that are brought off world to to make the craft. Are they friends? They cut their losses when crashes are recovered. Same with personnel. Zookeepers aren't friends with the animals, right? So he'll get into this later as well. When there's a crash, why not communicate? Why not? He says it's to them it's not worth it. They have so many things going on, and there's no reason to communicate. A vessel crashes, they just, if they can get to it, they do. If humans are crawling on it, they just say, F it, we, you know, nothing we can do about it. They don't bother. They don't bother with it. It's not, it's not worth recovering the technology. It's not worth having to deal with us. Do you know if the entities behind the UFOs are native to the earth, like an older civilization, breakaway civilization, or a civilization of humans that escaped a previous cycle of cataclysm due to their advanced tech? That's a cool question. Limited expertise, since my role is more craft analysis, U.S. believes they are far into our world. A previous cataclysm could make sense. They also show up in times of strife, such as natural events. I also think that other guy who was talking about approaching the area without being attacked as a remote viewer. Um, he talks about how he lurked on boards because he had never heard of remote viewing before. He wasn't aware that was a thing. Uh, but he says in his than the people he deals with that psychic type of stuff doesn't come up. These they're on the ground. They're scientists. They're, they're practical. They're, they're picking up pieces. They're not, you know, projecting their consciousness. Have you tried sending in a raft of hippies? The AI yeah, might not recognize them as a threat. Just kidding. Uh, based on previous disappearances and acts of hostility, we believe the construction facility carrier has learned what is and isn't hostile. Usually it would just move away or stay deep under the water. It doesn't fire on civilian boats, for example. Exceptions apply when we have seen one or two go missing, usually after sharp turns, etc. So you're on a princess cruise with, you know, with your family or whatever. You're probably fine. I don't know where the where the cruise ships go. I bet I bet they don't go in the Bermuda Triangle, though. Let me check the check the chat if you know. Maybe they do, but it seems to me like if you if you talk to the the, the suits that own the cruise lines and corporate, 
Like, do you guys cruise in the Bermuda Triangle? They would say, ah, we don't believe in that, but we still don't go there just in case. Jay Richard says, yeah, they do. All right. So I guess the, um, the platform is not worried about it. They're not worried about the cruise ships because they know who's, um, who's, who's an enemy and who isn't. But if a ship is cruising along and it makes a sharp turn toward the craft, it gets disappeared. Any relation to Antarctica? My section monitored just uh, this craft and any interactions that attempted. My, a previous coworker did mention something in passing of Antarctica at one point, but I ignored it, if I'm being honest. Talking about other projects is considered career suicide. How about the destination of the space warbs? Is Jupiter a potential destination? I believe they are keeping a massive orb inside of the gas giant. They have no evidence in many, but many dreams of it. No idea. If it's a project, I haven't seen it. No orbs out of the construction facility, just UFOs. What units have been lost approaching this construction machine? Why have they not sent a Seawolf to investigate? Mm -mm. The Jimmy Carter with its nanotech. Mm -mm. Everything you can think of, really. At one point, nuclear missiles were being toyed with. Again, we deployed fighters and a sub with serious intent. Everything except the sub was lost. Now, I'm not sure exactly what he's talking about here, but there was an, an event that you guys probably know about where in a nuclear, in nuclear facility, nuclear silos, suddenly they just started arming themselves. And uh, nobody knew why. They just started arming up. And everyone was like, oh, 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 it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. And then something happened and, no, and nothing happened and everything settled down. Um, but that was a scary situation. There's been, there have been some close calls and some false alarms. And this guy attributes some of those to UFO is getting a little, getting hinky with us. How would they come to the conclusion the UAP being released are ET? If they don't know what the UAP are to begin with, or if there's nothing inside them, it's a pretty big jump to go right to ET. That's a good point. He says they crash sometimes. Parts fail and gravity engines near the surface of the planet can be like crossing an intersection. We recover these and sometimes find passengers. We mostly see drones now. Back in the earlier days, we saw a lot more piloted craft. Um, this is just a question that he moved on from the, the project. The last unit we saw approach the facility didn't even have time to communicate. Okay, any details on what happened to that craft? Normal approach details. Pilot responsive and actively talking. The feed cuts out. Pilot still talking, suddenly nothing. Poor guy likely had no idea it was a suicide mission. Based on what we've seen, the construction facility has far superior weapons than the UFOs do. The weapon destroys the matter it hits entirely. It also craps on anything electronic in the vicinity. So Bermuda Triangle, right? They talk about compasses stop working, the radio, there's interference, magnetic interference. This could be what he's talking about. Like any... Just we just do like a, a giant EMP that lasts the whole time you're in here. So get out. The contents and equipment usually mimic the intended purpose. Um, like the equipment share a pattern specific to its purpose. Yes, usually when we find a thinner model, for example, it would have no pilot and have a lot of sensor sense uh, sensory hardware. My favorite is finding one that is fitted for research. If we're lucky, we find things we have never seen before. Before I left, we were looking at what we thought was a lab or some, or some kind for genetics, a genetics lab. I don't know if he gets into what genetics he's talking about, but that's, that's scary and, and interesting. Um, talking about one shaped like a pear burger. Size, shape, and speed are usually the factors we use to determine what the purpose of the UFO is. We get it wrong sometimes. They can be quite large, and both pear and burger shapes are known are known builds. So, common shapes. All right, I've had two orange orbs approach me to within 100 feet one night, glowing translucent, but rather dim like the setting sun seen through smog. They were flying in 45-degree formation like this, about 50 miles an hour. He says, research slash science vessels sometimes have mobile light producing cameras used for multiple purposes from scouting to keeping threats contained or at bay. These are shaped like hammers and when operated are extremely bright. 
Red lights are a sign of hostility or caution to deploy weapons. Orange lights are usually for spotting minerals or living things. That's kind of what I was talking about before with the, with the laser, the guy shining the laser. So he'll get into it later, but he's talking about red lights, orange lights, but, but later he'll say he's talking about lasers that they use. As soon as I blinked my flashlight at them and they accelerated to several thousand knots and disappeared. Um, he says, I'm not surprised. The range on those is quite large. The UFO was likely somewhere above you quite high up. Is the underwater base near Catalina Island? He says, no, um, this one has only left the Atlantic Ocean twice, both times before I arrived. Are aliens human or humanoid? And he says, humanoid, very humanoid. Then how do you know anything about abductions, forced breeding programs, etc.? He says, bodies are removed before we're allowed to perform work. We definitely see some pass. We definitely see some passing by, hence changes in older proven methods by new management. He's talking about how there's a lot of turn turnover in, in his team because they're using different methods now than they used to. So they're using new personnel. Um, also, real true disclosure coming anytime soon. The Air Force is extremely frustrated with the lack of progress on their end. We felt similar, but are unable to share details with them. So the Air Force trying to reverse engineer, but just can't make any progress. All right, so he's, uh, so I'd assume this is sort of an AI design that seems to be advanced, yet already prepared for the get-go. Can you rephrase this? Basically, when designed to, let's say, be a miner, you usually see hardware dedicated to resource collection on the vessel. If the vessel is something scientific, you may encounter things like tools, and as previously mentioned, something akin to a lab. We thought of it more as a I need to go hiking. So the construction facility, so the construction facility builds you a car, UFO, and packs it full of hiking supplies and even adjusts the shape to fit what was packed. That makes that makes sense. I'm keeping an eye on the chat, see if anyone's confused. But yeah, like I was saying earlier, what's the mission? Okay, you're going to do that. You're going to do mining. Here's some scanning equipment, some mining equipment. It's this size. That's the shape. We just skin it and deploy it. Uh, later, he'll talk about mining, how the Chinese have been able to successfully reverse engineer some of the alien mining tech, but it keeps breaking and they don't know why. And it's probably because they can't, don't have the right parts. And I, and I keep, I bring it up that he's going to say it later because this is long and people are going to bail out and I, I don't blame you. So if there's something interesting, I want to get you the nugget before you split. He's asked, do you think there are fewer piloted crafts because the population of the facility, if anything, is declining? He replies, no, the common consensus is that they're just being careful. I've heard recovery of living pilots usually doesn't go well for either of us. We suspect they piloted a lot of initial crafts due to early complications. We also saw more crashes. Any bodies recovered to show any ranges of aging we can recognize? I wonder if most of the inhabitants are either old or dead at this point, though younger bodies would disprove that, I suppose. So that's an interesting question. Like, are they, on the, are they here breeding on the platform? Or do they have extremely long lifespans and they've been here for a long, long time? He says, no idea about age, not my specialty. And asking about it would have been met, been a net negative, especially now. Previous higher-ups were getting better about being open with information since discovery happened quicker. But, uh, you know, I'd like to know that answer. And I don't remember if he answers it later. You know, are they breeding here? He does talk about how they're male and female and, and so forth. So maybe they are. What do the passengers look like? Are they biological and or android? He says they're biological. Do you know anything about people such as Stephen Greer, Elizondo, or whatever? Are these people in the know or LARPers or controlled misinformation? No idea. One name sticks out you didn't mention. Mentioning Bob Lazar by name would likely have you taken out back and put down like a dog. Do the math on why. That's very interesting. So he doesn't know who Elizondo is. And Elizondo was the director of ATIP. 
so that's you know that's an offshoot of project blue book that's that's right next to the air force he doesn't know who elizondo is so that's either the guy's not telling the truth and hasn't done enough homework because you should know who it is um or elizondo's is is just part of disinformation and this guy's working for the real thing so he doesn't He's busy. I'm, I'm recovering aircraft. I'm not following a disinformation campaign. But interesting about Bob Lazar that you can't talk about him. And of everything ever found regarding UFOs in general, what is your personal favorite? So he says, new engine was deployed with a very large model that I had never seen before. We usually see three to five gravity producing engines, and this one had seven. Favorite object or find? probably the lab since we never fully discover, never fully understood how it worked before it was destroyed. Makes me wonder whether a meaningful distinction between scientific study and amusement still exists for them if it ever did. He says, this was before my time, but they talked about a bus UFO that had more, that had more occupants than hardware. Most of the intended purpose appeared to be for physical viewing. I wondered if they ever just wanted to look at the animals. So, I mean, I picture the same thing, a big UFO with like, you know, windows on it, just cruising around, just looking at the intelligent monkeys. So he's asked, how long till we can hang with aliens? Here's his answer, as harsh as it is. Have any retarded cousins that destroy everything they touch? When do you want to see them again? Right? So yeah, they don't want to have anything to do with us. Retarded cousins. So I, we're just, they're far ahead of us with technology and we're aggressive. So uh, why? Um, someone's talking about a strangely recurrent thing at a minimum, the psychotronic devices of some sort. So he says, this reminded me of something in my first year. UFO crashes, they remove the bodies well before my team arrives. We start to look and the craft is unpowered at first. A few minutes later, the craft powers on and starts to close up. We radio out, we radio out and get a response from the unit removing one of the occupants, alien, that they are working on it. Ship powers off and the other team asks if we are good to go. No mention of how access was possible. I suspect the pilot may have interfaced with the ship by remote or psionic ability. So I don't know if it's this event or a different one he talks about later, but he's talking about a scary time where he was in a craft, you know, just whatever he's doing, like he finds tools and stuff. So he's gathering stuff and the thing closes and, and he's, he's stuck in there and he can't rate, you can't call for help. He can't radio out. He's just in there hoping that I hope this opens. All right. Someone talked as asking him about, are they translucent? They definitely had an inner core that wasn't see-through. Lots of tools they use produce light. Is this, if this is still about the orb, the shell you may have seen was just the light around the device I called the hammer. He mentions the hammer a lot as the shape, and I can't really picture it. I can't really picture it. Because I, I don't know of any, as that being a, a common shape, I don't know of any UFO that's been shaped like a hammer. You know, so I'm wondering if he means something else. He's asked, are there more than one construction facility? You mentioned one in the Bermuda Triangle. However, there are lots, there are a lot of uh, UFOs off the West Coast of the Americas as well. Any insight? He says, I suspect there may be, there may be, since we only watch the Atlantic Ocean and the UFOs we track normally don't stray far from home base, but asking about it would have been a bad move. So he doesn't know, but it could be that these platforms are elsewhere, possibly lots of places that we don't really know. And, you know, if his team is working on the platform in the Atlantic and there's a team working on a platform in the Pacific, they're not going to know that each other exists, most likely. Maybe maybe supervisory would. Um, but techs, I don't, I don't think they would be written on other projects. I think they'd, this is the only thing that we're worried about. Because what if there's, what if there are platforms all over the planet? What if, what if there's fifty? What if there's a hundred of them? You get to a point where you, where instead of focusing on your work, you start wondering like, what the hell is going on with all the, you know, where are we invaded? Are we infested? Are we overrun?
Well, he kind of says here, you know, are there more than one? Asking about it would be a bad move. Uh, he worked in the Atlantic. He doesn't know of the others. The mention of something in, in the Arctic was weird and brief when it came up. Um, talk about hybridization of the human race. If you only knew how bad things are. Um, he, he gets a little vulgar there, but basically says that um, they're not looking necessarily to interbreed with us because it be like interbreeding with a, an inferior uh, genetics. I read somewhere some UFO navigation systems requ require an extraterrestrial whose own personal wavelength has been specifically attuned to the neural network of the craft. So he says that tracks somewhat for me. When we look at the craft, we usually have to force certain things to work. Two teams come behind mine, so that could be dedicated to, under to understanding of the craft. So he mentions it here and there that there could be some kind of psychic interface. If you remember the episode on the um, the ARVs, the alien reproduction vehicle, and the Mark McC the Mark McCandlish story, where um, where his friends saw the UFO, and they they basically created blueprints of it. The controls were very simple, just just kind of uh, it was just a stick and and sort of a and and a and like almost like a trackball to control the ship. Everything else they thought was done with a psychic interface, which doesn't have to be that crazy, right? That doesn't have to be a wacky psychic interface. That could be Neuralink, right? Well, I mean, that's not that far off. You know, if if a monkey can use Neuralink to play Pong, then in a million years, aliens can use Neuralink to control a craft. All right, someone asked, can you tell us what they look like physically? Usual gray type or big ears? And he says, imagine the typical grays you see on TV. I've seen two corpses, so maybe there are different species, but I've never laid eyes on another. He's asked about culture, and he's heard rumors mostly. They almost never want anything to do with us. Mentions of destruction or warfare apparently change their attitude pretty quickly. I hope they're watching what's going on in Ukraine, right? Just keep keep an eye on that. All right, hell of a claim. Any particular incident? I'm assuming you're referring to the various nuclear nuclear site incursions. So he's talking about when they get involved with us. Let's see what he says. I guess global conflict wasn't a good term. I meant more of tension. The nuclear site incursions, the airspace violations has also been increasing tensions. From what I understand, the Roswell incident increased tension between the U.S. and Soviets. It did. There's secret tensions between their secret, the security tensions behind other countries getting access to information or materials surrounding the phenomenon. There's been a there's been great domestic tension within the U.S. True, intel agencies, military disinformation campaigns, etc. Disinformation is interesting. You know, if he's a military contractor, he or psyop, he would say disinformation. He wouldn't say misinformation. The civilians will say that. Because that's a new made up word. Disinformation is what is what um psyops do. Since uh, why did the UFOs uh screw up those people in Brazil? Uh was it by accident? Um, them not knowing we'd be damaged equipment. Uh if found, they usually monitor us. If approached at an uncomfortable distance, they flee. When cornered, it doesn't end well. I think he's talking about the uh, the Virginia incident. Uh, their tools can do harm to us even for just scientific purposes. We think they just don't care. All right, so he covers this a little bit later. In the, and I'm jumping around, but this thing jumps around. I just want to get you the nuggets. Someone asks him you know, about abductions. People are abducted and they're experimented on with, with, you know, these devices, scientific equipment, you know, Cartman gets the probe up his butt, whatever it is. And they asked him, you know, people talk about how painful those things are. And he says, they just don't care. Uh, we're just, they don't care that it hurt. They hurt us. They just, they're doing their experiment. And if it, 
it, if it destroys someone's mind, so be it. If it hurts their body, so be it. They just they don't care. We're just meat. Do you believe we're under their control in some way or sometime in history? He's asked. Possibly, but I have no way of knowing. The higher ups I worked for seemed hell bent on discovering more about them. Usually, not a quality found among controlled beings. And that's a good point. Right? If they're in charge, why are we trying to learn so much? Uh, what were the main reasons for the crashes? I think random lightning or freak accident, seeing how it seeing um seeing how advanced they are that's a good question you'd be surprised how many mistakes they make especially the further back you look one area they seem to avoid like the plague we suspect is due to issues with gravity and flight before they figured it out we collected we collected quite a few mishaps there they've tried to shoot down they've tried to shoot some down mostly over nuclear incidents but failed miserably all right he covers it a little bit later and i think i have some more insight that he doesn't get to is, um, you know, it's a good question. Why, if the, your technology is so advanced, why can't you keep your ship in the air? You know, flying is supposed to be the safest way to travel. Why are you crashing? If you can fly across the galaxy, you can't fly to New Mexico. Um, but he's saying that they were kind of still figuring things out and they were hitting pockets around the, around the planet where gravity was weird and electromagnetism was weird. And he talks about there's a place they avoid like the plague we suspect is due to issues with gravity and flight. And later he says that it's somewhere in Mexico. He doesn't know anything about it. But there is an area in Mexico called the zone of silence. And in the zone of silence, it's a weird place where, where nothing works. Phones don't work. Radios don't work. It's just a very weird spot. Now, it could be a coincidence. I could just be connecting those dots. But he says it's a place where things don't work in Mexico, but that's all he knows about it. And he moves on. Um, but that seems to make sense to me. Maybe there's some type of gravitational anomaly there that their craft won't work. Did you see written symbols on the craft? Yes, usually marked by doorways and key objects. Written language appears frequently on tools and critical items. Um, also, reads like their objective is to observe and preserve. And he says, I agree. The idea was pitched that they're waiting for us to mature or perhaps something bigger to arrive and they don't want us to ruin the planet in the meantime. So they're just keeping an eye on things until the big ship gets here, I guess. What do you believe is the reason for the uptick in sightings? Once again, my knowledge was cut off about two years ago. If you mean very recently, my guess would be the Russians and U.S. having a little secret dance amongst, amongst themselves, which they are. When nuclear anything gets involved, we see large deployments for long periods of time. Strife seems to be the catalyst. He's asked, what's your scariest experience while engaging with a phenomenon? What was your favorite? He says, doors and closing on us, as mentioned above, made me wish I had brown pants. Still fascinated with the lab we found. It was damaged by accident, and I never really got much time with it. He's asked, are you aware of any foreign... Uh, foreign tech that was successfully reverse engineered. He says, yes, we used to laugh at Russian and Chinese designs. We stopped laughing at China when they produced an operational but buggy version of their mining equipment. Still stumps most of our engineers. China also lies out of its ass, but from what we saw, we deemed it operational and working. Countries listed above have flight-capable craft, just not very good ones. I'm honestly surprised nobody's asked about the energy source or, or internals. And then he's heading out for the night. So this went on for multiple days. He gets to it later about the device with China. And what it is, I, I don't, maybe he'll tell us how big it is, but it's some type of laser or energy that is um, blasted into the rock, but it's tuned for whatever they're trying to mine. So, if it, so just a wall of rock, right? But we tune it for gold and it just, eliminates anything but gold. And so all that's left is just gold. Just vaporizes or whatever it does, just dematerializes the non-metal that it's not tuned for. So if they want aluminum, they tune for aluminum. Everything else is just eliminated or separated out. So apparently China has that tech, but it's buggy and, um, and they can only get it to work for very short spurts. So it's not like they're using it on an industrial basis. They just, they're trying to figure it out.
I don't know what the question is here. One example, um, one example was shortly after I joined, they said one was downed, but two occupants were alive. The first team couldn't, couldn't get close without being attacked. Aliens never seem to recover their lost UFOs for whatever reason. So they just waited out a few days until they died, then recovered the UFO. Hostility is usually their last option. What's the energy source? You mentioned Bob, so I think I know already. And if you know Lazar's story, then um, you would have guessed correct as well. Correct-ish. The power source is element 115. The thing no one talks about is that usually they seal it within the craft because it produces its own gravity field. Bob Lazar handled E-115, which was already pulled out, which is rare and weird. Protocol now is that only one person is allowed to handle E-115. I was forbidden from touching or interacting with it. Uh, we still had trouble producing it, too. So you know that we're producing it, but it's unstable. So I, if he says we're having trouble producing it, I don't know if he's talking about civilians or not. But... Um, if so, he's right. We can't get it can't get it to be stable. I'm just looking at the chat. Element 115, that's right. 115. Atlantis IRL, is this the whistleblower stuff? This is not David Grush, unless it happens to be the same guy, but I I doubt it. There are some things about this account that bother me for from a veracity standpoint. You know, for him dropping in things like LOL. You know, a, a military contractor, especially uh, like a uh, who works uh, like a scientific detachment, I just don't think would talk like that. But you know, maybe I'm wrong because he's he's about 30 years old, and he says everyone he works with is 35 or younger. So it's all people. So maybe millennials just drop casual LOLs in there. I don't know, but you know, it, his writing is very very casual. JG says, yeah, that guy just feels like a fraud. Uh, Aaron Skinner, I can't believe you're falling for a 4chan troll who would use our word. Um, I'm not falling for anything, Aaron. And I said this earlier, I'm, I'm saying that I lean toward this is not true, but it makes for an interesting read. You know, I think it's a good narrative, you know, so we don't have to believe everything to enjoy it. I mean, that's why the Y files exists, right? I mean, if I'm debunking most of the stories, I still like the stories and, uh, and judging by the live stream numbers, you enjoy it too. Bob Lazar called it Unpentium. Big Bad Airwolf. I would believe this if it wasn't on 4chan. Yeah, I, 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 I do too. I wish it wasn't on there. And that's, you know, and that's part of him being very young. Because if you're older than 35, which is not that old, but if you're just older than 35, four, you wouldn't even think to go on 4chan to blow your, your whistle on stuff. You would maybe go Reddit, and then if you're over 45, you know, what are you going to call the papers? But 4chan, that, you would do that if you're young. But I just think it's, I just think it's entertaining, um, and a lot of his stuff tracks with a lot of other things that we know about, about UFOs. Joseph Smith says it's true. It's all true. Scott R., I believe it more on 4chan than I would on Reddit, which is an interesting point. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of all those crazy conspiracies on 4chan turned out to be true, didn't they? How do UFOs travel in the context of those Tic Tac reports and Bob Lazar's report slash video where they seemingly jump through space, time, and light to appear in a new location? Notice how it just phases to a new location like staggers. He says, this is common when moving at high speed from a standstill or a slow speed initially. Gravity distorts time, and the object inside the field, field can stagger when traveling. It's an interesting answer, especially for a 4chan guy. And, you know, dovetailing with Cozy Rev's theory tonight on time being an energy, energy field that works with the ether, if you're using gravity to distort that energy field of time and then moving a physical object through it, it would make sense that it's going to look weird to us because when we see something, we're seeing electromagnetic spectrum of visible light moving at light speed come into our eyeballs. But if there's, 
if if you have this time is everywhere infinite, like Kazarev said, and this ether, which doesn't care about time, everything happens instantly. Things are going to happen in that realm that we can't really comprehend, but our eyes can only see visible light, which is too slow for the ether. It's too slow. So if an object is moving through the ether, it's it's going to look staggered. Shout out to the Picard maneuver. You oldies into TNG know what I'm talking about. Picard, Picard maneuver. Who's got it? Let me see. Who knows Picard maneuver? Matt, was someone really offended by the word retard? Hey, man, I didn't say it. But look, I'm Gen X. We grew up using that word. We don't mean no harm. We don't mean no harm by it. And look, if you're in here and you're offended by it, you're probably probably watching the wrong show. I've heard the craft can detect the presence of a camera and when someone is filming, filming them. So he says, not unless the craft is put into a mode to detect a lens. If the UFO is standing still or hovering, though, they won't miss you. You can see a face like you're standing in front of someone a couple of miles out. Doesn't look like a camera, though their eyes are different. He's just saying they, way up in the air, they can, they can, they can see whatever they want to see. How are you able to talk about any of this? Didn't you swear to secrecy? He said, yes, liver cancer sucks. Wouldn't the government already have their eye on you considering you could turn out to be a loose end? He says, I'm not going on national TV or radio. I'm on a 4chan board. I'm sure they look at stuff like this, but cancer makes you feel makes you a little makes you feel a little different. Also, did you or your coworkers experience strange things outside of work that could be related to what you saw? No, usually most people working there had no prior interest in UFOs or at least feigned interest or feigned not having interest. So someone says, hey, most zookeepers love their work and love the animals a great deal. And he says, I've wondered if some of them do like us. They definitely have the ability to destroy us. The spheres are a type of unmanned surveillance drone. Shaped like a hammer, but when activated, yes, they appear like spheres due to the intense light. They see light differently, and looking into the sun for them isn't an issue like it is for us. I can't speak for psionic abilities, if any, since I've only heard rumors in passing. We believe the lack of communication was inherent to the personal beliefs about us. As mentioned previously, but active, serious discussion about destruction gets them going. So they don't care so much until we start talking about destroying the planet. Do you think they're playing some role in stopping rogue entities and dangers from space, hurting us on a large scale? That's scary. He says that was another theory, yes. We think they are more interested in keeping the planet safe from us. Two main suggestions are that we don't spoil the planet before they arrive and take it from us. Uh, don't spoil the planet before they arrive and take it from us, or they are letting us evolve and grow while, pre while preventing devastation. Let's hope it's the second one. Not just, you know, keep, we're keeping the seat warm for you until the mothership gets here. And then we all, we're just all enslaved. It's a cookbook. Here he's just talking about remote viewing that he doesn't know much about. Someone asked him about interdimensional stuff. He says, as for the interdimensional aspect of it, I don't believe there's anything actually interdimensionally happening. It's just our best way to try and grasp, perceive what's going on behind the veil. From what I understand, whatever is behind the phenomenon has the ability to manipulate matter, energy, in similar ways that we can manipulate information. We can create 3D realities and manipulate them via our understanding of machine code and linear algebra. So they could do the same with matter and energy. It also seems to be able to play around with space-time, almost as if we're sitting on or perceiving time that's been homogeneously transformed into projective space while they're free to move, or move about homogeneous space. If they haven't entered the projection space, then they could freely move about our space without interacting with it until they collapse their space coordinates into our projective space, normalizing their position with their homogeneous coordinate. All right, so he's just talking about they're in their, they're in their space, their coordinated space, and we're living in, in, a, in a projection type of space compared to them that they could pop in and out of. He's not saying that that's true. He's just saying that that's a theory. What, why does image analysis by someone competent on the original UFO always show weird stuff? 
gravity and the reflective nature of the craft usually. Am I right in assuming that disco lights is just air absorbing radiation or being completely saturated by it? No. So no. He may talk about this later, and it's a good point, is that uh, if you see a, a photo of a UFO, the edges are always a little blurry, and that's how you know it's a real thing. If it's a sharp edge, it's not real, just because the way they move and the way gravity is. What materials are these UFOs made of? That answer gets complicated quickly. Short answer is an alloy that we cannot reproduce but only repurpose. This alloy is kind of like a film that fits over the craft over the frame of the craft. I mentioned they were built to spec. That's exactly what I mean. The shape is always efficiently designed. The actual frame itself is heavier and composed of more elements. Both of these alloys have a lot of elements we cannot reproduce. One of the main problems when repur when repurposing these alloys is getting them hot enough. They absorb heat very well, and shaping the metal is a tedious process. We can't melt it. Can you quickly walk through the process of identifying the contents of a crashed uh, UFO craft? First team leaves. First team leaves that details. All right. First team leaves that de that deals with occupants and initial discovery. Then we arrive and meet with an ex with an external member of the team who can touch and examine parts we are not allowed to interact with. We we've never had to cut our way into the UFO. We enter. We enter the first order. We enter, see, he doesn't use punctuation, <laughs> so it hurts the credibility. It's still a fun story. Uh, we enter, the first order of business is checking for E-115, then leaving the ship together and send it, send it away. Uh, we return and look for any tools and loose objects that can be extracted. We then start to strip any specialized components on board, such as sensory equipment or navigation. We leave, and a third and fourth team arrive, likely to remove the bulk of the craft. Tell me about the mobile construction facility making them. It's shaped like an extremely large UFO, but as one mentioned, more of a burger design. Almost never leaves the Atlantic Ocean. In fact, it will sit through hurricanes and only move elsewhere to release or receive a UFO. No visible weapons or cockpit from satellite footage. It also does not use any lights, unlike other UFOs. Are there no other things making UFOs? That's the question. Yes, UFOs arrive and depart Earth, but very infrequently. These UFOs are usually quite large. The U.S. has been itching to get its hands on a freighter UFO when inbound or outbound, but the chance has never presented itself. Leadership openly stated securing one would result in promotion. How do you secure that? How do you secure a freighter-sized, you know, an imperial, an imperial destroyer? How do you snatch that? Inbound. Uh, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, but what about the saucers, multicolored lights? I highly, highly doubt the drones are military, except for the triangle kind. This was important because he says I've. He says he's never seen a triangle UFO. Lights are usually on bigger vessels and are sensory in nature. They are also used to spot each other. So the triangles. He's saying that's not what he works on. Now, could be a different team that he's not aware of, or it could be the, the triangle experimental aircraft that we're not supposed to know about. But, um, but one of those triangles was just photographed in Vegas just about a week or two ago. It was, it was pretty compelling. All right. Are we taking a, taking a small break to do a giveaway or what? Yes, please. You'd like to? Uh, yes. I hope you're not too bored by the UFO discussion. Well, the count grew 2000. I got a, a weird commentary on it that I'd like to put out there. Um, what do you got? It, it seems like um, that technology is thousands and thousands of years ahead of us, right? Um, yeah. So um, they said that the reason we were finding bodies was because back in the day they had to pilot them more. So how come if they're thousands of years ahead, they're only working in like the 50 years of progress, like we are as humans, like in 50 or in a hundred years, we went from piloted vehicles to drones. So it took us a hundred years to get there. If they're thousands of years ahead, how come they weren't at drones a hundred years ago? 
Um, what, one of my questions with that. Um, but uh, I, I also um, put into the uh, private chat there uh, a link to uh, the lights over Las Vegas the night that uh, the kids saw the aliens. Mm-hmm. Which I believe is what you were just talking about with the triangle um, sighting over Vegas. All right, let me call. Let me call her up here. Uh, hold on, I got. I got to verify. I got to pick the motorcycles. I got to turn the elephant the right way. Complete the puzzle. All right, before the landing. So this is Vegas. Yeah. Looks like a Vegas backyard. Yep, yep mean, that's it. It, it. it looks like, you know. At the, first glance, I thought they could be the flares, but they ain't flares. Flares <laughs> eventually have to fall. Flares fall eventually. Hovering over the strip, though. Danny Stormborn says, thank you, Gino. Pulling up good show prep on the fly. That's always helpful. Uh, that was submitted to me by uh, Space Goat. <laughs> Space Goat? Yep. Submitted that? So this is a long time to, to capture this, but I don't see any structure between those lights. But I don't know because it was... <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're staying in the exact same formation without moving if there's no structure. I feel like I see something that they're on. You do? You know? Yeah, yeah, don't you? I mean, it seems like it's a little different. And it's like a... a that's what I it see. was also super, like, cloudy in Vegas. The other, I don't know JBC, how long ago this was. JVC... JBC Paints thinks this is the TR3. And that could be. I mean, what is what's that? that? Here, here's a helicopter. Really no. But I don't know how far they are from each other. Oh, true. I don't know what that is. Now, by the way, uh, that 4chan story, I never saw it on 4chan, but I have heard a lot of those very similar things throughout different stories. Uh, told on the internet that it's especially that there these uh, UAPs every one of them is being built underwater uh, at the time of that that it's needed you know they're made on demand kind of like uh, you know our, our t-shirts <laughs> speaking of t-shirts you can get a fear the crab cat t-shirt and all kinds of other t-shirts at shop at the wifi.com it's a great way to support the channel keep it going Every week is a new T-shirt. There's the the ladies are showing off this week. That's a Cozy Rev mirror shirt designed by the great uh, SMK Rob. It's really cool because the the silhouette is AJ and he's holding Hecklefish's bowl. It's really oh, it is. Yeah. Glaucoma says it's a light on a hill. Obviously, cool. No, man, Jeannie, you know, I need these teas. Shop at the whitefalls.com, man. Hop in there. I, there's got to be what we got to have a promo code or something that was always around. Didn't we have a promo code? Lizard people, wasn't it? Lizard people. Lizard, lizard people is a promo code? No. I, th- I think, I think so. I, I, let me put it in the chat. I think it's lizard people gives you like 10% off or 20% off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, one second. Oh, they're checking. Lisa's asking when the plush is going to be made. I'm not allowed to tell. Jim won't let me. I would just tell you, but. The plush is being made right now, but we're going to do a special announcement for the pre-sale soon. Very soon. Randoir, 10% off. Fizz gig now, you tell us. Sorry, I forgot. Ponyo Hecklefish doesn't have an OnlyFans yet, but he, but he, but he is. Two points. 
Man. Are we Liz doing a giveaway, giveaway? Is that the rumor? Yes. What's the What's the word? Lizard. Oh. Lizard people. Um, lizard people is the code, so you can do that. That is that is the code for ten percent off. Uh, yeah, all right. So, uh, so uh, we have some new people in. Here's how it works: a, a couple of times per show, we give away um, uh, gift cards to the to shop to the wifis.com, which is a great way to support the channel. You also get some personal time with Victoria, which is something that's very nice as well for the winners. And what you have to do is you type the word that you see on the screen into the chat. It's the only thing you type. Lizard people. That's the way he spells it. No space. Um, also happens to be the promo code at shop at the to get 10% off anything you want. Great way to support the channel or become a Patreon member for as little as three bucks a month. You get to see the videos early, you get private streams twice a week. And yeah, it looks like everybody don't see too many typos. Uh, Jeremiah, that's not how, how hecklefish spells people. Okay. He, he, cause Jeremiah spelled it correctly. Oh, yeah. But in the meanwhile, we could check out some of these super chats. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, DSDRN $49.99. I used to drive a Cadillac. Then I joined this stupid show. The human doesn't pay me much. <laughs> I need a lot more dough. I need another shackle. Tip the goldfish. Tip the goldfish. I need a shackle. Tip the goldfish. Tip the goldfish. DSDRN uh, looking to make another mirror. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mark Olwick, thank you for the support. The formless light people sound exactly like the beings um, from 2192 in the Dodelston time travel episode. I forgot about those. Yeah. If you haven't seen the Dodelston time travel episode, that's a fun one. Check that out. That's a fun story. It's uh, through through a, a, a computer in the early 80s. These, this couple is communicating with with the man who lives in their house way back in time and they're communicating through through this computer and through image through projections of consciousness it is a fun story i really would like to revisit that story especially uh on a, a podcast type situation if we could get the some of the original people which well, deb would come on deb is is in touch with us and would come on to talk about it 68, Mick, Mick, 68, Dick, ever heard of Dr. David Anderson Lewis and his time control research? I think I might have. I have to look him up. Is that, is, is he the one who's, whose father passed away and he's been working on time travel ever since? Is that that guy? It's hard. The chat's going by super fast right now because everybody's putting in lizard people. Uh, well, some people putting in lizard pee hole, which that will not work. <laughs> no, it won't. Gizzard lethal. That's funny, but no. Nope. And AJ just left. He's just going to leave us up here to talk. Okay. <laughs> so to find let's it. see. What do you call a time traveling bounty hunter? The Mandalorian. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Okay. <laughs> You're pretty funny for a human. She is. She's funny. Uh, Sean Clavin, nine ninety nine. Great show. Love torsion theory. It's, uh, here's your here, next one. Uh, thanks for the support, Sean. Uh, Sean's up there shredding. Here's a question for Gino. Carson Deem asks, DC or Marvel, which one is better? You know, that's a hard question because it's that certainly changes per what uh, um, movie is out. But if uh, I had to go uh, with the canon of uh, 
of history. I go with Marvel on storytelling from the comic books, personally. All right, Gina goes Marvel from comic books. Garrick Duval, what Patreon level do I have to be to join AJ in the Home Depot Cozy Rev Mirror? It's got to be black belt or above. Uh, uh, do we still have colored belts? Is that how it works still? Yes, but I'm changing that this week. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Daniel Lyons, thank you for the support. Appreciate it. Yellow Umbrella Homebrews there. The sound production was top notch tonight. Hi, Victoria, Gino, Jen, and Hecklefish. Hey. Thank you for noticing. Put a lot of work into the sound design. There's Joe P. Oh my God, amazing episode. Oh my God, oh my God. My new favorite, the beard overwhelmingly approves. Congrats on the 43K. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Joe you can You can hang out with Joe um, every Thursday in the Patreon chat. Tyler, thank you for the 1999. Cha-ching, baby! If you don't have a vid on incorruptible people, can you do one on Sister Wilhelmina Lancaster? I have to look her up, Tyler. Put that in the tips line or email me so I don't forget. Randoir, 15 Canadian. Uh, you read my question from chat and you pronounced my name properly. Pretty good for a non-professional streamer. <laughs> could you once? I mean, could you just one time conduct <clears throat> this live stream in a professional manner? Chris Shank is there. I always look forward to your show every week. Fantastic job and amazing research. Thanks, man. The, the Cozy Rev Mirror episode almost broke my brain. Omnominus um, Rex. Seems like we're needing a Wi Fi slash Mythbusters style spinoff show sometime in the future. Yeah, we got something cooking that you might like. We do. There's Ed Francis. The official superhero of the channel, Heil Tailspinner. Great episode. May not be here later. Promised Twerpy I'd take her to see the new Spider Verse. Long days and pleasant nights. P.S. My Tattoo says, Why files in Latin in case that wasn't obvious? Yes, it does. Zeb sporting a new Why files tattoo. He sent a pic from the. There he is at the movie. Aww. Oh, how, <laughs> how just adorable. I heard that movie's pretty good. New Spider-Man movie's crushing it. Jeff, Jeffy Spiegel, what the mirror is missing is an actual mirror coating. We build, we polish to mirror perfection, we travel. Maybe, Jeffy. So the, the, the glass mirrors that we use to reflect light didn't work for Kazarev because he tried that. It, it's just a different um, frequency. He found that aluminum was, was working, but... Um, but I'm down for a ride. Memo Salas is ether made up of dodecahedrons. I, I don't th I don't know if it's made up of anything specific specific structure like that. I'm trying to think if he um, if torsion was in the ether. I would assume it is because it was in everything with him. Chance maybe lizard sheeple. That's not going to work. Um, Joseph Chavez, does AJ do the hecklefish voice? No, he does his own voice. Who does your voice? Re7, this is the highlight of his week. I appreciate that. Joe Mangini, gizzard flipper is not going to work. Lizard people, please, is the word. Uh, lazy pupil is not going to work. <laughs> L peep dizzle won't, won't work. But it's funny. <laughs> By the way, did you know that this lizard people is one word spelled just the way it'll get you 10% off at uh, shopped at the whitefiles.com. It's a great way to support the channel. Uh, where, where am I here? Dodecahedrons. There's Mike and Murph. Non-human intelligence is to humans as humans are to, hmm. I don't know, insects. Maybe less, fewer. Well, Dmitry Kudrastyev lived in Russia in the 90s, if you can believe it. 
It was quite a popular theory, though never accepted. Literature, healing devices, and amulets were sold. I am quite a skeptic. And you have every right to be, Dimitri. Because that, that research was never accepted. I mean, they, they submitted, the scientists submitted their research to mainstream journals, and none of it was accepted. But they continued to get funding by, um, by the state, the Soviet state, and then after the after the fall, the Russian state supported them and also the private sector. And the, the CIA kept tabs on it. Uh, J. Richards 99, cool idea for an episode would be sacred geometry itself and how all the elements in the periodic table are based of a big fan. Thanks for all you do. Sacred geometry, okay. Cool, we'll look at that. Daniel Leo, the Mickelson-Morley experiment attempted to, de to detect the ether. Yep, that is the one. That's correct. Jesus too. I feel validated. Your triangle hand gesture is a representation of a three-dimensional prism meant to look through with one eye closed. It reveals the matrix. To break out of the simulation, you'll need a sphere and a square with know-how. All right, man. Katie Parker, vote for Hecklefish. Also, zero-point energy episode. I guess we can do one, although the um, the anti-gravity, the, uh, the ARV episode covered zero point quite a bit, including all the, the, the scientists who allegedly discovered it and were subsequently met with early strange demises. Seven of them, I think. Fireside Films, thank you for the $20. Ooh, I finally love hearing the phrase, just the tip. <laughs> oh. Another great shout. Thanks. Our tribe is thinking of making some Kazirev mirrors for self past life viewing. Bring your own popcorn. Let us know how it goes, ma'am. The dude 87. Hey, AJ. Joe Rogan was saying the whistleblower could be a plant the U.S. government put in place to throw the citizens off. Great show tonight. Hello from Connecticut. Hey, the dude. Yeah, Joe might be onto something there. That's what my spidey sense says. But the question is, what are we being thrown off from? Yeah, are right. We being are we being thrown off from the a little bit of reality that there are things here that aren't human? Or are we being thrown off from money being laundered throughout the government that has nothing to do with aliens at all and with just something else to look at? You know, we, we, there has to be reasons. And it's hard to just throw it out there that, um, it, you know, that, it, you know, the whistleblower is a plant without saying, what, what are we accomplishing through that? Right, because I've seen some people, you know, in our audience saying it's to distract from certain laptops and money laundering and things like that. But presidents and vice presidents are not in the know. You know, the military complex wouldn't, they don't care what happens to those people. So I don't know what they're distracting from. And I don't think it is distracting from any of that. The, the people who are interested in these things are uh, you know, different groups. Mojo, $10. I used to be addicted to time travel, but now it's all in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <sighs> Becca Contreras, what do you think league meant from the observer being? Yeah, that was weird, wasn't it? That was the only word he was able to make out. Maybe there's a league of observers. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but we're, but they're pretty convinced that they were grays, alien grays. Aaron Lynch, 50 bucks. Won't, won't you tip me? You know I don't believe you when you say you don't got money. Won't, but won't you tip me? You know I can't believe it when you say that I'm not funny. I write too many jokes just to amuse you folks. You better super chat me or I'll just keep singing. Won't you tip me, human? Won't you tip me? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Won't you tip me, human? Won't you tip me? Whoa, 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 whoa. Love the wife files in the after show. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate the generous support. 
JPLF the fish. Would you do an episode on the Plum Island Lyme disease urban legend? That's a pretty good one. I think that's probably safe to do. That's an urban legend that Lyme disease was um was manufactured on the Plum Island research facility, which is which is up there in the Long Island Sound and got and got loose and landed in Connecticut. Because we didn't really have Lyme disease before, I think it was the 60s or 70s. Good story. Could be a good one. I think it's safe to do. I wonder if there's a content warning on that. A lot of East Coast people have Lyme disease. Mm hmm And you don't want that. That's a shitty disease. Liz, people uh, has got 965 people. Is, are we ready for a drawing or, or give it a minute? Let's do it. Uh, Miles right. Albert, where can I find where can I find a blueprint to build a Kazarev mirror? If you if you look if you Google it, Miles, it's easy to find. There are, there there are a lot of those, but there are also the patents that you can find that 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 give you the proper angles and so forth. Oh, right. isn't it amazing way. what passes for a live stream these days? Uh -huh. oh, Read this one first. Uh, Vinnie Maroni. Or Vinnie Muddle. Mia M is stoked to talk about time travel on her ninth birthday. She's a fan, but Hecklefish is her favorite. <laughs> and I like it. I like it a lot. Happy birthday, Mia. Happy birthday, Mia. Uh, Jay Yee, Jay Yee, love the Wi Fi. Do you have an episode on the God factor as claimed by some quantum physicists? I don't have one on there, but that could be a good one to do. All right, I'm clicking draw. Get your lizard peoples in. Muscle car Mike says lemon disease. That that's that that's another citrus disease. Uh, Frank says lizard people love Victoria. That's probably true. <laughs> Stephen B goes with gizzard purple nipple people. <laughs> we wear short shorts. Uh, there's Casey, there's Big Ben, there's Bellatrix, Bombi, Patrick, Lim Lightfoot, Lisa's is there, Neil, the sad read down with Mayuka, E. Peter D. Travis Justice. Travis Yay! Justice. You've just won a private conversation with Victoria as well as. A fifty dollar gift card to this. What, what, and what does he have to do to, to claim his prize? Come to Discord and put in a help us ticket uh, with your name and email. <laughs> Take it away. There she goes. <laughs> Recovery oh Hillbilly. How about an episode on the Melungeon people of Appalachia? Send that in the tips line or email that so I remember. That'd be a good one. There's Rye D. Bye. Thank you for the support. We need a mug that says, don't say but. Don't say but. Best episode to win. There's no definite debunking. Thanks again for the amazing content. Don't say but. Don't say but. There's Paratrooper 108 for 1999. Thank you, human. Maybe now we can get some indoor plumbing for this bowl. Ugh, it smells like a dumpster full of used baby diapers in here. Oh. Will you give us a heads up when the episode you shot last week will air? If I'm t if I'm told, then I will. <laughs> but I didn't ask. I didn't want to be weird. When is it going to be on? When is it going to be on? I, I would suspect it's going to be quite a while. Well, we're at three hours, 13. I can burn through some super chats and go back to 4chan. Well, I, I think Charlie we have say, but. a storyteller coming. Yeah. Gino's oh, it's time for story hour. Yeah. New story hour. Tell me 
something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Jet set and betting at the back of the scenes. Worldwide travel fiend with the green. Jack Hare, he's the bone who bears. Big bushes change smell. Fall the air. Hey, <laughs> Where's Gino? Yeah, that too. But yeah, it's true. Cause that's a dude he cares about. He brings around the vibes and the souls up. Kind of ends well, kind of a rock there. Well, he was just singing into his phone doing doing a freestyle. It wasn't like he was what? setting up. Yeah, he was just freestyling. <laughs> freestyling. Uh, yeah, excuse me. The only dance I know is roll the dice. Oh, this here's an important comment. I want to make sure we get out there. Rob Ashley, former Air Force OSI agent here. That, by the way, that's 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 Doty's former unit. Take what he says with a huge grain of salt. We're trained to lie out our butts. That's true. That's true. That's Rob, Office of Special Investigation. Appreciate that, Rob. Thanks for checking out and checking in. All right, so we're doing story hour. Mm -hmm. Does that means I could chew a piece of nicotine gum. Yes. Uh, do you uh, have uh, pictures available for me? <laughs> of course, Story Hour is brought to you by CavemanCoffeeCo.com. Use uh, promo code WIFILES. Caveman Coffee Co. There it is. Coffee.com. Co Hang on. Uh, say, uh, okay. Coffee. Is there a Wi Files roast on here or something? I, I believe that's almost up there. Uh, I, I think uh, oh, Victoria this? had some interactions for us. Oh, this is in case this is shopped at the Wi Files.com. It's a, another great way to support the channel, but you, you could also do this. They so, Mammoth Roast, I heard, is good. Does Tate keep have the coffee like around? Like seriously, could you get some, or do I need to order it? No, I could get some. I just uh, yeah, I, I was uh, waiting until I made my move. Now I'll get get some out here to you. Okay, I mean, I, I guess I could I could pay for it, but you know, it's not like we get a big commission on these, y'all. But it's supposed to be very good coffee. Chance maybe wants to know, does Caveman Coffee have spearmint coffee? Hmm. The chat is a Wi-Files ro Wi roast. Half squat, short beard. I'll buy some coffee right now if Gino can say Caveman Coffee Co. five times quickly. Caveman Coffee Co. 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 I think I won six. Now okay. I see every order that comes in, so uh, that better be a fulfilled promise. Ask Squatch, you got to got to make good on it, man. I'm watching. King Biggle says goldfish roast. That's that's interesting. Well, they'll find out all about what's coming from the Y Files and Caveman Coffee in uh, a couple of weeks. Be on the lookout. You know, I'm always on the lookout for CavemanCoffeeCo.com. It's a good website to uh, peruse. You could use a promo code WIFILES to get 20% off. If you like these stories and you want more of them, this is the best way uh, to uh, support these uh, story hour chats. That's your uh, that's your promo read? Uh, I tried. I, I tried to get it in there, uh, you know, off the top of my head, but. It wasn't bad. wasn't bad. All, All right. right. I don't so, know if these pictures are in a certain order, but I have the thumbnails if you wanted to tell me what to show. You know, I, I'm not even sure uh, uh, which ones uh, you have in, in what order. I think there's only like six of them uh, or seven. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I'm going to, I'll tell the story and we'll, we'll pull them up as we're, we're, we're going here. The story we are telling. Say again. Oh. What? Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Tell me 
so I don't know where's Gino. Oh shit, where he go? Follow Gino on Instagram and Twitter is uh, where's underscore Gino. Very fun feed. Oh, I guess I put I put in the chat too. You gotta you gotta follow the Y files though. OMG the Y files. That's on Twitter and Instagram. Fun feeds. All right, Gino, it's all yours. So tonight I'm uh, telling the story of the the Khufu alien encounter. Um, uh, as uh, a lot of people who are already watching could tell by the the um, great uh, picture I have there. Um, you know, of course, you got to back it up with evidence. I got some evidence here. Uh, in 1975, way back in the day when alien sightings were not so prevalent uh, in Japan. There was uh, a sighting in, uh, that was named uh, after the city that it happened in, Kofu. And it was a clear night. And uh, so uh, these two cousins were out roller skating, playing around. And it was starting to get dark. So they decided it was time to go home. They wanted to uh, watch one of their favorite shows on, on TV. So time to go home. Like back then, 1970s, you let your kids go out and do anything you want. No one's watching the kids. So these two kids are out you know, wandering around on their own, their cousins. And as, uh, so, so they're walking home, uh, they take their skates off, they're walking home and they s spot these two bright orange lights in the sky. And that's the reason this story really, uh, I was attracted to because my UAP sighting was a bright orange light, exactly similar to what they described. And so many others, uh, uh, Again, uh, I talked about it on a different episode. Uh, Jeremy Corbell ha had a similar sighting um, and uh, to exactly what I saw. So these two cousins, they're like, in, they're, I think they're in third or fourth grade. They, they're, they're pretty young, um, nine, I think nine or 10. Um, so they sp spot these two bright lights in the sky. And one of them, uh, the larger one, shoots off to uh, uh, Mount Otago, um, which is in, in Japan, obviously. And the smaller one starts coming down o overhead. So now they see this thing coming down. And they're, they're pretty scared. And out from this, like, double the size of a car-shaped um, uh, saucer is comes a, like, black cylinder tube. So they think this has got to be some sort of weapon or something. So these kids are scared, obviously, 1974. It's not even like UFO sightings are talked about everywhere. And all you got is, is you know, the one TV where you, the only science fiction you're getting is possibly Star Trek, maybe, I don't know. Uh, and in Japan, I don't know what kind of shows they have to, to base their imagination on. So they see this tube coming out. They, they think it's uh, some sort of weapon, but they get, so they run. Now they could hear it like clicking. So the way they described it was uh, the clicking was kind of sounded like a, a, an old camera shutter. So um, so they hear this clicking. They run. Now, they're running down, down the street. I don't know what they were thinking. They hid inside of a graveyard. Uh, I don't know about you, but as a kid, I'm not hiding anywhere near a graveyard. Uh, you know, I've seen Thriller and Night of the Living Dead. So I know what happens when weird stuff's going on. You don't go to the graveyard. Go somewhere else. So anyway, you only like, get caught up in that funk for 40,000 years. <laughs> That's exactly right. So they're hiding and uh, now they don't see, see the, they don't see it anymore. So they think, all right, they're safe. Let's get home. And they start, start heading home. But all of a sudden on their way home, they're like in a sort of agricultural area. And there's a vineyard that's on the same block on their way, way home. So they could now see over the vineyard, the orange lights. So I don't know. They got, uh, you know, s somehow a lot more courage between uh, the graveyard and the vineyard. And they start go going over to check out the vineyard. So they can't see the orange light anymore above the vineyard. But as they get into the clearing of the vineyard, you know, they, they lost sight of the orange light. But now they could see that there's a craft that's landed on the ground. So, um, you know, I don't know what aliens are doing in a vineyard. Uh, you know, I guess everyone li likes to get a drink once in a while. Um, so uh, they see this this craft that's that's uh, landed on, on the ground and they described it as uh, now it's not orange anymore. It's not glowing orange. It's like a, a gray silver metallic. And it was rotating uh, at one point, but now it, now it stopped. They could see that it had... Um, 
like a oval shaped uh, dome um, on, on the top of it. And they could see writing, legible writing on the actual ship. Um, and, but they couldn't make it out. They said it wasn't Japanese writing. They, you know, they were old enough to read Japanese, but they couldn't make out what th this writing wa was, but they remembered what it looked like. They were able to reproduce it, um, which we'll get to in, in a second. So, uh, so now they're standing there in awe of this thing and they're looking at it and they also see that it has a ladder coming out of it with seven steps. So. Uh, I don't know about you, but if I see this on the ground and there's a ladder coming out of it, you'd think something's coming out of it or is already out there. So now they're sitting there watching this thing and all of a sudden an alien pops up behind them and taps one of them on the shoulder. Tap, tap, tap. Now, I don't know why he's tapping them on the shoulder. Uh, you know, usually they're doing other kind of probing than, than finger tapping. Uh, so now this kid gets uh, uh, super scared, of course, you know, what are you going to do when the aliens are, are, are poking you? Um, and he doesn't know what to do, so he plays dead. I don't know if that's a good way to get away from an alien, um, but th that's what he's doing. He's playing dead. I, uh, you know, I think you should, like, make yourself big, you know, like if a bear's coming at you, you got to make yourself big and scary. That's, I think, would be a better way. Uh, so you are the, you are the new survivor, man. You would, you know, you gotta be, you gotta prepare for these things. You gotta, you know, that's what these stories are about. So you know what to do in case you start getting tapped by aliens. So, uh, so now the one cousin is laying on the ground. The other cousin is screaming, let's get out of here. You, you know, um, the alien is now circling the kid kind of observing him while the other cousin starts screaming, the alien scatters back and starts going back towards the craft. So now the one cousin runs over, scoops up his cousin, says, come on, let's get out of here. But now they can see inside the craft from where they are. As I told you, those stairs were down. So now they're checking out inside the craft um, uh, from their angle, and they can see there's another one inside. Um, and they describe them as super wrinkly brown aliens with, with big ears and three fangs coming out. Um, and, uh, wearing silver outfits and the one that was outside circling them had some kind of what they thought was a weapon. Um, it looked like a rifle with a huge end on kind of like a, a blunder buster. Um, I'm sure a lot of the, the ladies. Blunder bus. Yeah. Blunder bus. Yeah. Blunder bus. Uh, uh. So, um, but, you know, he wasn't using it as a weapon. He just had it. Um, that should be somewhere in the pictures. Um, the blunderbuss? Yeah. So uh, look for the picture with two aliens and two crafts on it. Yeah, there you go. So you also drew the blunderbuss. <laughs> right, right. All right. I, I see it. I got it. All right. So so now this, uh, they're looking inside the craft. They could see that the dome that they were looking at is kind of like almost like a two-way mirror. You could see out through it although from the outside you can't see into it and then also they could see that there's like screens in front of them now again we're in 1974 tvs back then were as big as a house so it wasn't like they had led screens in their mind or computers or anything like that so that adds a slight, slight bit of credibility to the story for me that they're they're seeing these things before they were really reality in you know, the human, you know, world. So, uh, so they, so that's what they see. And now they, they book it out of there. So they book it out of there and, um, and they get home and they're going crazy telling their parents and the parents think, you know, the crazy kids are making up stories, but they're, they're convincing enough that their mothers, uh, again, they're two cousins. So their two mothers come with them and go, all right, let's go, go see. And they go back there, and the mothers don't see the creatures, but they see the silver disc. Uh, uh, they see the ship in the air. And they also see um, an orange, a small orange dodgeball size uh, probe of some kind in the air. So now the, now the mothers are, are, are scared. So now they run back to get the father. So now, you know, big family affair. Fathers come out here to, you know, to check out what's going on. 
and they uh, they they don't see it, you know by this time things are starting to progress and all they see is the uh, orange light in the air and then all of a sudden psh, boom it's gone so now that's what the father's seen so now we got six different witnesses so far uh, on it which you know that that's what it was and and uh, you know the parents didn't report it or anything like that so the next day comes and those kids go to school um, so, uh, when the kids go to school, um, uh, to go back, the parents described it as the, the, the glowing ball, dodgeball size thing as like a fiery, a fiery ball. Um, and there's, a uh, uh, in Japanese culture, there's something called a, a hippodama, which is supposed to be like a fiery ball that holds human souls. So that's how they described it as a hippodama. Um, so the next day, these kids go to school. And now when they go to school, um, they get to school. And on the wall of the classroom is a drawing of the spaceship that they seen. So like, what's this? And turns out one of the other kids saw the same exact thing and put it up there. So now the, the two cousins are going crazy going, we seen this. We've met these aliens. They came down. They poked us in the back. You know, tell them the whole story to, to the teachers and, and, and everything like that. So now the teachers, of course, don't believe them, but they're convinced that these kids are not, they're truthful. They're not lying, you know. So they tell the principal and the principal contacted the local newspaper. Now, a newspaper reporter comes out to talk to these kids and interview them. And he takes them back. To, so the newspaper reporter asked them to do all these drawings. So that's what we're looking at. The drawings that we're looking at, like right now, we're looking at uh, there's there's the blunderbuss uh, up up in the uh, top right. Uh, the aliens have big ears. Um, uh, you, they're showing their their suits a little uh, with the crafts. So what they're showing at the bottom there, those two, the landing gear was like kind of like the uh, the Kentucky Goblins are described the same way as this. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to look into the comparison of that because I never even considered that, but that's interesting. Um, that is exactly what the Kentucky Goblins look like. So on the bottom of the craft, uh, those uh, like U-shapes, that's the landing gear. Um, and uh, and again, you could see on their drawings, they even put on the the, uh, the markings. And on some of the drawings, it's a little, they the, the markings that they remembered almost resembled some... English writing, not all, but, but some. So, so now the newspaper guy is out there interviewing them and he brings them back to the vineyard. Once they get to the vineyard, they see there's these three concrete uh, pillars that were knocked over. Um, and in, and there's like a metal uh, fence that was, that was somehow uh, dented by something very heavy. So they see that there, um, and uh, they also see that there's indents from those those the landing gear that that's there. You know, obviously these little kids aren't making these indents and you know knocking down pillars. You know, I don't know what kind of crazy kids they they got back there. Maybe they were, um, but uh, but they got now now this evidence inside where those landing gears were was like white ash. So uh, so now you got some empirical evidence the, that they, they could test. So the article comes out in the paper and a scientist uh, decides, hey, I'm going to go out there and study this. So over a month, he goes out and collects soil samples from it. And he concludes very positively that the soil samples are heavy, heavy radiation. Now, of course, he can't say that um, it came from a UFO, UAP or anything. Because at that time, you know, there's a lot of nuclear testing going on in the world. So he said it could be fallout from nuclear pet testing. It could, you know, it could be other natural things that did this. But something had to connect with the Earth here and leave this radiation. So there's some empirical evidence. Um, so now that the article comes out, um, it's... Uh, some more and more witnesses come out. There's, a, um, you know, one witness who saw the kids and then also saw the ship above the kids. 
and he's he runs um like a environmental center there so again it's not like uh it's just um some someone who's you know that wouldn't be afraid of getting called out for being a liar you know uh your reputation is everything especially in japan that's part of the culture so you know you really wouldn't want to be lying about aliens you know you'll you lose everything. So that that person uh, came out, uh, said they they seen it. Uh, there was another woman who saw uh, saw the uh, UAP from her balcony, and um, and then there was um, and then there was uh, another. So after all that happened, um, ten years later, they were t- there was another woman who came out who said I was a too afraid at the time to say anything. But that night I was driving and I heard loud noises that I thought were fireworks. And as I came across this crossroads, I seen two, what I thought were little kids because they were about four foot or so. She's so, you know, she, she's thinking they're, you know, teenage kids or, or whatever. And so she starts beeping, trying to get them out of the road. And they, they not, not paying any attention to her beeping or anything like that. Um, you know how annoying kids are, so they won't get out of the way. And she just keeps honking, laying down on the horn. Things won't get out of the way, so she inches up close, trying to get around them. Finally, as she gets close to them, she sees they're super wrinkly, uh, you know. And um, uh, she could see that uh, um, that they have uh, uh, weird, you know, uh, wrinkly brown hands. And one of them puts its hand on her windshield, um, and she described it as. It didn't look like a human hand. It looked like the skin of a turtleneck, you know, like, uh, like, uh, like super wrinkly. And, uh, so she came out, uh, 10 years, 10 years after. Uh, so this is a story that, that came out in the beginning of all pretty much, you know, uh, UAP history is when we started really starting to, to, to hear about these things a, a lot more. And, um, Multiple witnesses, again, I think is considered one of the, the most authentic stories coming out of Japan for UAPs. And uh, and again, with the multiple witnesses and uh, the great pictures that we have, I don't see how anyone could discredit this story. And that's the story of the Kofu aliens. There he goes. Story time with Gino. Me something I don't know where Gino, oh shit, where he go. Curtis, Tell that light behind Gino, know, that's for effect. Gino, he, oh shit, he, where he, go. he wants to make it sad. Well, you're looking into the into the alien craft. With the green Jack here, he's the bone who bears big bushes, change smell with all the air. Hey, hippity doppity doppity doo. Where's Gino? Yeah, that's who, but yeah, it's true, cause that's a dude he cares about. He brings around and pops and thistles up. I love the OMG. OMG, Jen's cat is massive. <laughs> He's just chilling. All right. It's I, his I, bedtime. I, I don't know about this story. This you believe this one? I mean, you know, uh I, I don't see anything that's um that's wrong with this story as opposed to, to any other ones. I don't like that. It just tapped them on the shoulder. That seems a little strange to me, but that yeah. really was a focal point of the story. The tap on the shoulder. It was uh, I, like, I, I, I did a, a good amount of reading up on this story again, you know, uh, cause when I'm thinking about a story, I think it was something I, I heard and whatever. Um, so I wanted to, you know, read up on the details and that's like one of the focal points of it that, that that since this was the reason the touch matters is because it's one of the first instances of close encounters of the fourth kind. So now but people uh, were saying that those don't look like Japanese kids. I was just well, going to say the, 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 I don't know this picture I don't like because I, this isn't part of the drawings. Um, so, uh, uh, shout out to, to Brett, one of our mods, uh, on discord. He's the one who dug up the pictures for me. Uh, I don't feel like this picture belongs. Uh, I, 
I, I could be wrong, but I don't. One I don't of think these things is not like the other. There ain't no Asian face in the whole spot. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like this is maybe uh, the Zimbabwe alien sighting. Uh, I don't see any Zimbabweans yeah. in there either. Uh, that's yeah. Uh, or uh, maybe I'm thinking of New Zealand. Maybe Kentucky. No, Kentucky. The Kentucky sighting was in the woods. Maybe New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, if they weren't holding up pictures, I, I would have said, uh, it, you know, this is children of the corn. <laughs> well, there's wow. Austin Lee for 50 bucks. Just want to celebrate another day of swimming. I just want to celebrate another super chat. Put my faith in you humans, and you humans let me down. Then you give me a shekel, and it turns my heckle frown upside down. I just want to celebrate, yeah, yeah, another day of swimming. Austin D, another amazing show. Kudos to the best streaming channel and crew. AJ, Jen, Victoria, Gino, and Sir Hecklefish. Love you all. Live in Florida, but pretty sure I heard AJ's voice on the radio originally from Huntington, New York. Maybe you did back in the day. Appreciate that, Austin D. How do we, how do I get the uh, thing on the... This live stream is a mess. You should be ashamed of yourself. Shame, shame, shame on you. Next door nomad, uh, it's like astral projection, right? Similar to that Monroe Institute stuff. It's as, as if they've connected with a deep projected state. Ever felt like the shake float than the astral pop out? What do you think? A lot of the, a lot of the witness reports sound like astral projection. They certainly do. Absolutely do. So we're at three forty one. What do you think? I just blow through these super chats, and we'll have to. Talk about the 4chan UFO another time. Yeah. Rich just said he swear he saw me on NCIS and he was right. He did. You but did see her on NCIS. NCIS. <laughs> Dead Bambi. Um, thank you for supporting. Thank you for that tip. Now I can finally join C Harmony and meet the future ex Mrs. Moriarty. Are you ever going to do an episode on Indrid Cold? We are indeed. I like that. I like the injured cold story. Uh, Galia for 65 um, pesos. Hi, Wi Fi's family. She's a big, longtime supporter of the channel. What do you think about Billy Carson? He talks about this topic too. Great ep. Congrats. Now I can't sleep. I'm hooked. Hugs from Mex. Do you know, you know Billy Carson? Oh, yeah. Billy Carson's the best. Uh, I mean, it, he, he has such a large breath of work. It would be uh, too hard to just pinpoint one great story. But anyone who's watching should should Google Billy Carson. He's a big, uh, big on Gaia. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a lot of the stuff is very outrageous. But, you know, you find the, the kernel of the truth and the outrageousness is uh, what, well, what I mean, I'm it, looking for. it's on Gaia. It's going to be wild. Uh, but he's he's a, a, he's an excellent speaker um, and so knowledgeable. So so the things that that he has that he speaks about, um, it's hard not to believe him because he is such a dynamic speaker. Uh, he's I'm a, a great speaker. He's a great speaker. But I mean, I I watched some of his stuff about when I was researching the Emerald Tablets, and he he didn't get nothing right. Oh. He didn't get nothing right. But he was entertaining as he did it. Super fun. But that's what I'm saying. So, so he's a little outrageous. But you know, there are kernels in in, in his stories that I think do matter. Um, and uh, it's just not all nonsense. Agreed. Uh, Michael White for 10 pound episode on aliens, fairies, and shamanic visions similarities. I'm reading Graham Hancock's visionary. Took me by surprise, but it's compelling. 
Sounds like codes red beings too. Could the ether be DMT space? That's interesting. I don't think it is, Michael, but but the um the they did see fractals in the in the mirrors, you know, for sure. So I don't know. I don't think it is, but maybe the maybe the DMT opens up the pineal gland and we can see things that were previously unseen. Sonny A, another trust me, bro, dude. I got you. Orion XS, I forgot to type a message, so here is more money. Stumbled upon a Dr. Stephen Greer talking about a false flag alien invasion to create a new world order. Would love to hear your take on ET's disarming nukes. They seem to disarm the nukes. It's definitely happened. But there was that time where they armed them. So... Uh, well, I don't know. Why does Jenny have RBF over there? What? No, I don't have RBF. Do you have RBF? No. Chad, do you see that RBF? There was no RBF. I was just hitting the cat. Gen Z toward I Mandela effect. I covered that a little bit in simulation theory which I think was fun. Flat Earth, I'd like to cover. I just have to be careful because uh, YouTube doesn't like Flat Earth stories because it's misinformation. Can't even have a conversation anymore. Uh, AJ, can I go back to one thing about Billy? Uh, you know, some, one thing about the dynamic of, of this team is um, we are very, very different when it comes to how we watch things, do research, things like that. And I don't want to debunk anything. Uh, so even if Billy is wrong, I still want to watch it. Um, and I leave the debunking to the rest of the team, especially AJ. You know, he could ru ruin my day with debunking a great story, but I want the story. So uh, like when we're on Discord, often there'll be people telling stories that are obviously not even close to set in reality but and people will call people out for them and i don't i'll tell them stop let them tell the story because i want to hear the craziness of that story now once the story's over then you could ask some questions you know but I, we want to hear the whole story and that's really how aj set up the the channel originally which is i think a genius way to to run this the the um, the story is to tell the entire story first. Let's go through it all, all the way and then see if there's holes that need to be poked in it or not. I mean, again, I'm not not a fan of the, the debunking part of it. I'm a fan of the story because I, in my simulation of reality, I want them all to be true. I don't want anyone hurt. I don't want anyone probed, but I want them all to be true. Even the one that landed in Vegas, because now that I'm here, I'm going to be watching the skies. Got to keep your eyes on the skies. Only only between 50 and 70% of people watch past like the two thirds, three quarter mark. So most of the, most of the audience that watches the channel, they never even see the debunking. They just see the story. Right. We get, we get comments all the time. They're like, Oh, this is all BS. This has been debunked, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, you've, um, you obviously didn't watch the whole thing. Didn't watch. Yu Wu says uh, a few things about Grush. There are vying factions within the government wrestling to keep this hidden slash expose it. The hiding camp, CIA Air Force has lost control. This is a process. Let's wait and see where this leads. Those are interesting thoughts. I'd like to know where, uh, uh, where you have that info, UWU. A little sauce would be nice. Uh, but I can't disagree. Can't disagree with that. All right, we're gonna we're we're gonna blow through through some super chats. Uh, I've been told by the chat that the RBF uh, means resting beautiful face. Aw. There she goes. Uh, talent guy, out of curiosity, did Richard Doty ever give sworn secret testimony to Congress or the IG? I wonder who the real liar is, someone willing to go under oath or someone willing to get paid at conferences to tell tales, Serpo. Um, I mean, Doty said Serpo was all true. He has not given sworn testimony to Congress that I'm aware of. You know, if he 
perhaps gave testimony in during a private committee meeting or something that we would know about it, but never public as far as I know. Um, but the planet Serpo and the Serpo project, he said that whole thing was true. And that's a wild story. If you don't know that one, um, we have an epi a long episode on it. It's a wild story, but it's a fun one. You know, he claimed that the Holloman UFO landing, um, at Holloman air force base was, was the, the initial project Serpo contact and the timing works out. And it's one of the most compelling UFO videos I've ever seen. It's a great one. It's hard to find, but uh, but it's in that episode in the uh, in the Wi-Fi's archives. Libra Music, uh, do an episode about Fort Detrick. Really cool story. I don't know that story, Libra, but email me and I'll definitely check it out. Got Haunted Doll for five bucks. Oh, yeah, baby, slip that in my G-string. Will you please do a show on Madman Mike Markham? His story is my second favorite Art Bell story after Mel's Hole. It's up there it's toward my, uh, it's in my top maybe five for sure, Haunted Doll. Yeah, Madman Mike Markham is on the list. Um, if you don't know who he is, he's he built a time machine. He built a time machine and he, he stayed in contact with Art through the whole thing. He, um, he even addressed things like, you know, there's something that, that very few people talk about or miss. Is that uh, you build a time machine that you go back in time five years or forward in time five years, whatever it is. No one realizes that the, the Earth is in orbit and the, our solar system is in the galaxy and the galaxy is moving around a cluster and that's moving around our part of the universe. Like everything is moving so far and so fast that if you went back five minutes, you'd be, you'd be floating in empty space. But Mike Markham has solutions for that and is about tethering his device to the Earth's gravitational field. And it's not always accurate, but it's it's fun the way he describes it. He tests the machine by throwing a cat in there that didn't go well, but it, but it was it was it, it's a good story. He he ended up time traveling like two or three hundred miles away in a different year and had to walk his way back. But yeah, I'll, we'll cover that one. I think I. Th I know I threw that out there to go on a list, on but list. He, he's on there. Yeah, it's not slated on the schedule as of yet, but it's high up on the list. We'll slate it. Uh, we will. We will. There we go. Bohemia Bees, that's the official uh, beekeeping channel of the White Files. Checking in for duty. Um, if And if you're looking to pursue uh, the keeping of bees as a hobby or perhaps for, you know, for fun and profit. I recommend Bohemia Bees, an excellent channel about bees and, and the keeping of them. Green Lion 781 for $10. Years ago, I had an accidental meditation experience that sounds very similar to mirror experiences. Observing alien building, Norse runes around me, entity kicking me out, but friendly. Oh, that's fascinating, Green Lion. You know, people who get really good at meditating can achieve those different states of consciousness i used to meditate a lot and i, I should get back to it because it's it, it definitely helps my anxiety and my type a um i don't meditate quite as much anymore but when i was really into it there was one time i had a crazy experience i definitely shifted consciousness for just a, a little while and i got kind of frightened and was pulled back but yeah it can happen uh josh see for ten dollars would you do a private recap of today's episode for a company event love the show what is he talking about? I, I think he wants you to do a private. Well, he can he email team at thewildfiles.com and we can discuss it. A little cheddar cheese. Gino's doing thumbs up. What, what's up, Gino? I think he already emailed us. Um, take a look at the email. It's an interesting one. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I just uh, am entering something in the chat, uh, again, from a number one fan, Space Goat. Uh, an interview uh, 19 hours ago dropped from the kid in Vegas uh, who um, saw the aliens in his backyard. He put up a video. I did not watch it yet. It's a seven-minute video. I just wanted to put it out there that it's there. That's the, that's the kid. From Vegas, right? Off on the sky. 
I turn Let's around, see. the only thing I, I see is a big light falling from the sky. And moments after, I feel a big impact and a, and a bang, sort of like a big impact fall. And me and my brother looked at each other and we were scared, but, the, but when that impact happened, it was sort of like a shock wave, like an out of body experience. So to say, when I tried to look at the object, it was all blurry. Uh, Not my vision, but only the backyard. He's got, a, he's got ring camera footage. Video. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see that? Here's a ring camera video. You could hear. All right, so that's the body cam. That's, that's something. Here's a ring camera video. You could hear the bang. This is around the neighborhood. So here's the video. Remember, Kofu aliens witness, she said she heard fireworks. Yeah. So when that happened, the only thing I can see in the backyard is a tall creature, probably around eight, 10 feet tall, very thin. So I called my dad, but it's there. Here's a video. Hey! <laughs> Moments after the video, me and my brother went to go pick up my tools. Then my brother calls me and he told, he told me shakingly, look behind the forklift. So I look, keep in mind I'm facing the forklift and then I see the alien creature. So when I saw it, it was a tall, skinny, lengthy creature. He was a gray greenish color. And when I looked at it in the eyes, my body just froze. Like the same way, the same experience as having sleep paralysis. Keep in mind, I'm staring at him and I look at his whole body and he has a weird looking feet and a big face. Body cam of the officer. And now it's more than an hour after that bright light, officers meeting up with the caller and his family. What'd you see? It was like a... It was like a big creature. A big creature? Yeah, like a long, tiny top. I'm not going to BS you guys. One of my partners said they saw something fall out of the sky, too, so that's yeah. why I'm kind of curious. Did you see anything land in your backyard? Or? They see like a big, that's what they say. They see like a big, uh, like a big something with light. What I saw right now, I do believe in it. I Police know. walk into the backyard to investigate, but Metro. So they went in the backyard, and one of the officers pointed at the floor, and it was a perfect circle. Here's a photo of the circle I'm referring to. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Keep in mind, two officers came in my house and one of them started running to his car, driving around the neighborhood. Okay, that's something. Keep in mind. What's clear, they're taking this call seriously. Hey, this might sound like a really dumb question. But did you guys see anything fall out of the sky? Asking others what they yes. saw. Uh, I would normally discount it as nothing. However, um, seeing as one of my partners said they saw it too, only reason I'm actually investigating it further. Goosebumps are freaking out. He started investigating that he told me his partner, she saw a light falling from the sky. He told me he believes me because her partner reported that she saw the same light as me. Now we're walking the front yard and then the other officer came here. Here's a video of him talking to my family. It does. It does. Nine foot beings come back. Don't call us. All right. Deal with it yourself. That, I ain't dealing with that. <laughs> That's just the footage from the news. I, I mean, it doesn't so, seem like he's lying. You know. I mean, it's it's a circle in the dirt. It's a circle in the dirt. You need you gotta have, have nest cameras in the back or something. You can't you need can't, more cameras. Yeah. Kiki JD gives 50 bucks. I know it sounds fishy, but I just can't stand the pond. Human, I'm leaving here tomorrow. It 
Seems to me I'm headed for bigger things. But I got bad credit, so banks won't let me borrow. No, no. No, 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 no. That's why I'm begging. I'm begging for you to tip me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, any chance of offering larger shirts? Love the show tonight. One of my favorites. Do we have larger shirt? I mean, how, how big are our shirts? Uh, we can go up to 5X. If he has a particular shirt that he wants, just email me, Victoria at the Y Files, and I'll put it up there in larger sizes. Uh, oh, all of our shirts can go up to 5X? Um, we have to use a different shirt than usually we use, the Monster. We have okay. a different one that we can put up in 5X. All right, we're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to super chat and blow through some of these as fast as we can. So I won't keep you here too late, but if you did super chat, and if I didn't get to you tonight, I do apologize. <clears throat> Heart ponder, time is what keeps everything from happening all at once. Buckaroo Banzai. That's, that's true. He did say that. He also said, uh, no matter where you go, there you are. Jesse JFR, 199, cover Bohemian Grove. Meet you guys in the woods. I might cover that one, Jesse, but it's not, it's not as, the truth is at least the, it's not as fun of a story as, as the rumors. So I would have to do an episode on what's rumored to have happened there. And that's, most of that stuff's pretty dark. K Bear, uh, 699 Canadian, would you be interested in doing a video about the Russian cauldrons? I would, Kay Bear. You got to uh, leave that in the tips line. Let me see if I can put that in the chat for you, if it works. Yeah, there you go. Paratrooper 108, my birthday too. I'm waiting, Victoria. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that wasn't bad. That was, that was more than I thought I would get. All right, there, there they go. Uh, Vivid Dreams Publishing. What is the roles of the team? Gino is producer and brother. Jen is your wife and social media. Victoria and who does Hecklefish's voice? Uh, everybody, everybody down there are producers. I'm only married to one and brother to another, and Hecklefish does his own voice. E. Peter D. Congratulations on the new record. I like big tips, and I cannot lie. You other fish can't deny. Art Bell's birthday is next week. Maybe you could do a short something on next week's episode as a tribute. That's a great idea. I didn't know it was his birthday. But that's a great idea. I mean, uh, I wouldn't be here. None of us would, would without Art. Becky Ward. So the so the Rus Russians invested a Stranger Things style TARDIS. Awesome. Love the TARDIS and Heckle's Bowel. Great episode, by the way. Uh, Crop Circle episode was great. My favorite UFO topic. Well, thanks, Becky. And I don't know how you saw the TARDIS and Heckle's Bowel, but it, it was there. <laughs> Typos are funny. <laughs> Matt, man, 50 bucks. I'm a fish and I'm a star, so put more dough in my jar. The type of vodka that I need is Belvedere. Matt says you guys rock I our I need oh. to buy a tinfoil hat, so please click the super chat. We all know the government is listening. Yay! You can get those from shop at the by the way. It's a great way to support the channel. Or you could do what Matt does and just drop 50 shekels in the till. You guys rock hours of awesome entertainment, no bad days. 
some days more hours of entertainment than others. <laughs> Herrick Bar, Bar Her Herrick is there. Awesome show as always. You guys rock to AJ and the whole Y Files crew. Whoop de doo! Thank you for that juicy tip, human. Anthony Rock, explosive new disclosure witnesses and archives unveiled over an intensive two-day conference, followed by the Disclosure 2.0 National Press Club event. Now let's see what we get. Ed from Chicago, $49.99. Yeah, yo. Yeah, yo. Ooh, la, la. Yeah, yo. Fish really need some money. I need to buy some stuff. Fish really need some money. YouTube don't pay enough. Fish really need some money. So click the super chat. Like that, that, that. That. Thanks from the guy with the hecklefish and crab cat tats. Ed from Chicago, that's you? Oh, my God. Wish, wish I can get them. I don't know if I can get them quickly enough, but I put those on the Twitter. We tweeted them out. All right, where, where are we? Oh, there it is. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I'll get it. Mm, do I watch the After Files live stream or do I punch myself in the face? Tough decision. <laughs> that hurts my feelings. <laughs> Mac, there's, there's the fear of the crab tat. Oh, that's fantastic. So awesome. That's amazing. And oh, there's crane technique. That's the crab cat. I don't know which one is Ed's. I think it's this one, right? Yeah, that's his avatar. No, he's got it in his avatar. That, that's his. Amazing. 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 Uh -huh. Where do you think Victoria's going to get her tattoo? I don't know. Well, maybe the chat can vote on it. Just start. Oh, just put, put body parts in there. No? No. Don't even say put. Black Canvas Live Wanderers. Great episode tonight. I was going to tell you a time travel joke, but it turned out you didn't like it. Crab Cat. Dave Carruthers, first time joining the live chat. Welcome. Wanted to show some support and say that I love the channel. Also, I totally join a religion with a talking ferret. Okay, that's what I had heard. That's what she heard. Talking ferret. I don't know. You know, we're she's studying theology, but Jen, it's it's a zoo. Sure, it's not theology. It's a zoo. Arc Punk Comics. Oh my God, Ori works at Spearmint Rhino. He's gonna love that shout out you just made it his night. All right. Well, shout out to to Ori. Now that Gino's here, see if Ori can hook us up with a table. The cloudeth ninth cloudeth. Love the episode tonight. Try it out the Cozy Rev mirror and can confirm Gino is fast asleep 30 minutes from now. Uh, I don't think he knows me very well. I'll be he at the poker know. tables in 30 minutes and yeah. uh, I'll be happy to see you there. The, uh, the after file starts at 6.30, which means Gino's been up for just a couple of hours. Victoria will be asleep a half hour after the show. There she goes. There, thumbs up. There's Austin D, 1999. Booyah, that's the stuff. Thanks, AJ. We'll be going to Vegas for the first time in the fall. Need your top five gentlemen clubs. For each one you drop, I'll send a super chat. I recommend the Spearmint Rhino, of course. Ask for Ori. He's he's our man. He's our man. That... No? Yeah. Isn't that him? Okay. As for uh, what what club did Michael like? What was the name of that club that he liked? It was like Sapphire or I think it was Sapphire. 
or could have been diamond or it could have been, yeah. you know, the root, the Ruby room. It was some kind of precious stone. It was one word though. I think it was Sapphire. Gino says it's Sapphire. No, you just said that that was, <laughs> you just said that that's what he said. That's it. Alyssa M, my kids, Elliot 10, Bella 6 are super excited to stay up late on Thursday nights to watch Y Files. Taxation is theft. Taxation is definitely theft. Biggity bingo, human. Uh, but now, uh, now Bella and Elliot off to bed. That's late enough. Mr. Peckerwood's back. Anyone planning on time traveling? Anyone pan planning on time traveling needs to watch the Cyanide and Happiness time travel PSA. Time travelers hate this simple trick. Do you know that one? I do. I'm quite familiar with, with most of their catalog. You're familiar with their catalog? Yes. So if you guys are Cyanide and Happiness fans, uh, check out. There's a series of like four or five episodes that they aired last May that were... Um, sci-fi Saturdays and they were they're like very popular episodes but they were dubbed in science fiction language like there was one in Klingon and there was one in Elvish and there there are a few of them and those were all sponsored by the Y Files and AJ and I did all the voices for them so very fun All right, so this is this is the leak from dubbing Klingon by a Gen and I. David Bowie. Can you hear our voices in it? Benson. No, that's not going to Bail it out. Bail it out. Oh, there she goes. Nook. Majachuk nech majom judge. Majibu yegosh. Hom judge el gelkoi. Nook nech rosakas. Bakwa ah. Check out the Y Files for ancient mysteries, the paranormal, and weird science stuff. We cover alien bases on the moon, time travel, and expose CIA experiments that are definitely not legal. But it's not a conspiracy channel. We back up everything with facts. So if you um, hello, and we have a talking fish. Good to meet you. If you like CNH, you're gonna like the Y Files. Link in the description. <laughs> yes. And for the longest time, ever instead of saying "oh shit," we would say "bakwa ah." Bakwa ah. <laughs> yeah, I worked for Explosive for a while. We that's when we lived in Dallas, so very fun. Jose Gallo, Jose, 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 love the new video. Have anyone of you had an extraterrestrial experience? No, but Jen dated, dated some weird guys. <laughs> Secondly, would you ever consider consider doing a video of your subscribers' experiences? I had one fly overhead when I was seven. You know what? We will be asking for, we're going to be doing a podcast, uh, The Y Files Unredacted. And so we're going to have interview segments and we're going to be talking to people that have had experiences with 
UFOs, ghosts, all kinds of different things. So yeah. what? What was he going to say? So <laughs> keep an ear out because we're going to be asking people to submit stories and do interviews and all that kind of stuff. So very exciting. She's very excited. Just Patrick, first timer. This is fun. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Tip of the morning, human. Etch, etch. How do you say that? Got hooked after I found your channel a year ago. Much love from Sweden. Thoughts on an episode about the last Ice Age, Graham Hancock stuff. I talk about the younger Dryas all the time. Etch, etch, e.g. Um, maybe maybe do a full episode on it if I can think of a, like a reason to do it, but it comes up all the time on the channel. So if you're new here, as you work your way through the catalog, you're going to see younger Dryas and the great flood come up over and over again. Mike D for 501. I found the Wi-Fi universe in June, 2022 dog suicide bridge. When you had maybe 200,000 subs, 2 million new subs in a year since then. Thanks for creating this. Yeah, Mike, it's been weird. I don't know why uh, so many people watch the show, but I I'm glad that they do. You think this passes for a live stream? Think again. Yeah, that hurts my feelings. The CCCCC video channel, Deep State Ops. Please keep 911-911 exotic weaponry on your radar for the future. Um, I think CCC is talking about the, uh, the way some of the towers appear to just vanish when they, when they fell. You ever seen those videos, Gino, you know, where it looks like the it looks like the top of the tower just phases out of existence and the metal falls without the stone? It's pretty compelling videos. Um, I can't find it anywhere else besides that one, though. So I don't know if it's a weird angle or what, but it does look like it, it just disappears. Yeah. You I, seen that? Yeah, I have. Um, you know, I you know, it's hard to to decipher what happened because there's just so much uh out there on how buildings explode and uh everything that that went down doesn't look like a plane regardless of if it was a, a energy weapon or uh internal or you know it, it's hard to do an episode uh, on it but uh, uh oh we can't ever cover this yeah, we can't ever cover this, but it would be an interesting episode to do because the 9 11 conspiracy, there's a lot of compelling information. Lot you, of compelling you know, information. And the exotic weaponry, it's really interesting. Uh, um, you know, obviously, the, there is exotic weaponry out there. The, the, uh, is it the Cuba effect? Uh, is that a Havana, a Havana yeah, effect? The Havana syndrome, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he was talking it. about the ultra, the ultra low frequency. Uh, sound that makes people sick. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's the the buzzing that a lot of people are beginning to hear, the low hum um, that uh, also exotic weaponry, maybe, um, you know, just as plausible. Maybe we'll do it. As... We might do an episode on, on weird sounds or something because the Tao's hum, I don't believe was ever solved. And those hums yeah. appeared everywhere. Yeah, we there's have the hums on the on the list why don't you have an advil there's anna hate for 50 bucks they see me swimming in my waist send me money because you know that my bowl is dirty because you know my bowl is dirty because you know my bowl is dirty want to smell my bowl it's dirty come and sniff my bowl it's dirty my poop is nasty it's floating please tip me because you know that my bowl is dirty because you know my bowl is dirty because you know my bowl is dirty want to smell my bowl it's dirty come and sniff my bowl it's dirty I uh, just keep doing it. Two that get me every time that come and smell my bowl and want to sniff my bowl. That makes me <laughs> laugh. So, want to sniff my bowl? It's dirty. But don't, do you know, he just wants you to know if you want to maybe sniff his bowl. Oh my God, that is so funny. I don't know what kind of channel this even is. <laughs> oh my God. What is what is this? 
I'm a mouse. I'm a mouse in a maze. It's a maze of crazy. Can someone please point me to the cheese? <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Thanks for that uh, generous tip. John Hobart's there. Me again, damn it. If you guys really want some interesting material about why the ETs are here, get Keepers of the Garden. Dolores Cannon. Just do it. All right. Hang on. Keepers of the Garden. Oh, my God. Uh, Jane Sellers, Dolores Cannon. There we go. Kindle? No Kindle, John? The Kindle was the one above it. It was by Jane Sellers, then that's the audio book. There you go. You see Kindle? Right Kindle, there. Right up Cool. Thanks, John. Rock and steady. Stephen Greer is right. Be cool if he was. I don't know if he is. Fair player 11, Mr. Perfect Weapon. Oh, there's a little, it looks like a gi. I don't blame you for this, guys, because I introduced my daughter to Wi Fi, so now I need a favor. Can you give a shout out to my daughter, Natali? who is now in Belgrade, Serbia. Hi, Natali. You got to yell louder than that. What are you going to do in Belgrade? You got to yell. You got to yell. Thanks, fair player, for, for, for spreading us like a venereal disease. Graham Wilson, 1399 Canadian. Hello, loves the channel. I've watched every one of the episodes and tell my family and friends about the channel. Keep up the amazing work. Thanks for spreading the word, man. Love the content. I wish I hadn't watched it all already. Do you have any suggestions for other channels or favorite movies, docs we should check out? Um, I like Answers with Joe. I like Bright Insight with Corsetti, if you're into this stuff. Um, we talked about Mr. Mythos before. He has a pretty good channel. Covers a lot of the same stuff. He's very in-depth, but it's a different vibe. But it's good. And Sam Tripoli. Appreciate that one. Or Sam Tripoli, which is also a very different vibe. If if Mr. Mythos is here, like energy wise, here, Y Files is way up here, energy wise, then Sam Tripoli is way up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his uh, latest podcast, Broken Simulation. Check that one out. Lauren, but his podcasts are longer than these after files. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and they talk about all these kind of stories in 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 depth and with a lot of animated characters. Lauren, often Eddie Bravo. Lauren Huff, nine eighty nine. Why would they want Earth's resources? There are infinite other planets. P.S. Love Gino. Nice. That's a good question, Lauren. Um, you would. It's always about gold, and you would think there's plenty of gold on the asteroids and, and other bodies floating around. And I think there is, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But who's digging it up? They, they need us to dig it up. So also <laughs> diamonds, uh, you know, they've, they've integrated into our culture so that we think that diamonds are rare um, to make them more valuable. So we dig up more of them and we're getting them out of the earth because they need our diamonds. They need our gold. They need our precious resources. Where do you think all the old iPhones are going? They got to get all the lithium out of them. <laughs> oh, the aliens taking our old iPhones. Basil <laughs> stepping on 49 I want you to know I said human. Thank you for all the dough tipping. As I'm sure you will find, always is a good time. Ooh, 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 it's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. It's fun to tip the F-I-S-H. <laughs>
Basil Stepanoff, uh, thank you for the hours of entertainment and stimulation. Sometimes it seems like we are doomed to become the sci society in idiocracy. Mm -hmm. Your channel gives me some hope that there are some curious people out there still pushing us forward. Thanks for the great comment. Basil? All right, we're just about ready to wrap her up, huh? Yeah, you're... What's that other face doing there? Michael Chandler says, best ever X-Files sub. Welcome aboard, man. German Green, thank you so much. I love the show. Would you mind creating a video series showing the peculiar overlap of the research in your videos from the pyramids to Tesla to the magnetic lines, et cetera? That would be an interesting exercise, German, because sometimes, pretty fre frequently, actually, I'm researching a story and then it takes a weird turn. And next thing you know, it's two or three stories in one, like crop circles ended up with a CIA connection that um, I didn't force that in there that it just, it just appeared. And, and it was like, Oh, well, that's a cool twist that I didn't see coming. Eric Wilson, no comment, no super chat, no nothing. Just shekels in the till. Appreciate that, Eric. Bradley Lynn turn seven uh, ninety nine Australian. What are your thoughts on the Emerald Tablet and Tesla knowing the secret of the pyramids videos being linked? Emerald Tablet is uh, not real, and Tesla knowing the secret of the pyramids might be real, Bradley. Um, but I have full episodes on both of those, and we go into in depth. Mick Mac Mick Mac Mrs. Ever get requested to do a show about the Bridgewater Triangle? I have. It always interested me. Love the channel, by the way. I have, and um, I'll consider that another one. And there's book Sunwalker for fifty dollars. Ugh, thank you, human. I'm getting killed on alimony and guppy support payments over here. Please never stop this channel. It's great. This message is for my Wi Fi guy and team. Do you believe that alien life has visited the earth in the past or they are actually in the present? Also, side question, what do you think of the matrix theory? I think aliens have probably been here and probably are here now. And I I don't necessarily believe the 4chan guy that we covered, but under the ocean is is where my gut tells me that they're coming from. Matrix theory, I don't believe in the matrix, but I, but I'm pretty uh, probably 90 10 for simulation theory. Death by Snoo Snoo. Look up Charles David Charles Grush, UFO whistleblower, and he worked for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency (NGA) and the National Reconnaissance Office at our F NRO. He gave a speech to Congress about it. That's absolutely true what Death uh, by Snooze and Snooze Snoo, Snoo, Snoo said. Donnie W. loves the channel and loves Hecklefish. Whoa, this is one smart human. Are you sure you're not pot goldfish? Character holding, thank you for the $20. You're saying we can't trust the government? Poor K. You can't trust the government. I love, uh, John Mangino, I love the idea of two aliens in Vegas. In full fear and loathing mode, screaming about goddamn bats. That be that'd be a funny way to to redo that that book slash movie. Mars Ford, great episode team. I'm so glad these kinds of topics are being discussed more openly. Feels like a sea change. I hope so. I hope you're right. Van Dunn was just talking with the guy to a guy about with Lyme disease earlier today. It's pretty rough. It is. A book called Bitten describes the lab leak. I didn't know that. I'm going to check that out. Do an episode on William Reich, another suppressed and discredited genius. He was. I know him. Graham Wilson loves the channel. I've watched every one of the episodes and tells family and friends about it. Keep up the amazing, amazing work. Oh, yeah. You're spreading the love. I appreciate that, man. Matthew Wickazer, great episode. Here's ten dollars toward Hecklefish's advance. On on an advance, on the advance, on the advance. Jeffrey Dommel, ten dollars. I'm still waiting for you guys to tell me what's going on with the rivers running dry. Euphrates is in Revelations. They say you can hear screams and chains are rattling. Yeah, it might be fun to cover that. It might be fun to cover that because I know those stories. It's happening. Maybe we'll cover that, Jeffrey. It's a good story. Katie, if Hecklefish becomes president, does the Secret Service protect him from the CIA and Lizard people? That's a good question. I have to ask him about that.
All right. What 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 can I read in one minute? Mike Bradshaw, great job in the episode. He loves the loves the team. Appreciate that. Tim Jett, opinion of Stephen Greer and his claims. I covered him a little bit earlier, Tim Jett, and a few times. I'm glad he's out there. I believe a lot of his early work. I'm suspicious of anyone making a lot of money. But it could be fine. Please make Crime Story 2. It's green. I've been with Wi Files from when it was a few thousands. Love you guys, a few thousands. It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't. Oh. We're going right, to do crime up. stories on a different channel. But yes, coming up it's in, in the works. Coming up on four and a half. Uh, so we're going to close it there. Uh, there's Victoria. Thank you for your help tonight. There she goes. And Gino, Gino Story Hour, huge hit. Waiting for those Game Man Coffee color. Tell me something I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Where he go? Where he go? And I don't know where he go. Uh, and there's Jenny. Thanks for your help tonight. Appreciate it. All right. There she goes. There she goes. Green Lover, thank you for that. Thanks to everybody who super chatted tonight. I appreciate it. It keeps the channel going. Um, shopped at the whitefiles.com. Grab yourself some gear. Now, um, we really don't make a lot of money from that stuff, to be honest. I try to keep the prices low. I just, it, the stuff is fun. And, you know, people are going to ask you, what's the deal with the fish on the shirt? So, uh, so there's fun stuff on there and more fun stuff to come, like the Hecklefish plushie, uh, which it, it's a talking plushie, of course. So that's going to be coming along very soon. So I appreciate the help. Shop to the whitefiles.com. Become a Patreon member for as little as three bucks a month. Bunch of perks. Um, hanging out with Patreon members tomorrow morning. I hope you guys enjoyed what we did tonight. Ran a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I wanted to cover the 4chan stuff. We needed to cover David Grush. Um, didn't get to the orbs tonight, but maybe we could do that next week if there's interest in it. In it. The videos are queued up, ready to go. We had an interesting story for Gino's story hour, and overall, I think we had a good time. Once again, thanks for hanging out. Uh, we'll see you next week, and Hecklefish will sing you out. The end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full, I swam down each. Each and every highway And more Much more than this I did it my way I've loved I've laughed and cried I've had my fill My share of losing and now, as tears subside, I find it all, it's all so amusing. To think I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me. Did it my way for what is a fish? What has he got? If not himself, then he has not to say the things he truly feels and the world the one who Did it matter?
seconds. Let's hear it for the Wild Wild's house band. You guys sounded great tonight. And take care of those waitresses, will you? All right. Everybody get home safe. This is Hecklefish. And you know what? I did it. My...